credits DepEd undersecretaries, other officials, and staff. Um, on an administrative matter, I commend the Vice President for bringing her own tumbler. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I was about to say, and I'm sorry, Yusek, pero bibigyan na lang kita, kasi I always say that kung pwede lang sa hearings, walang, uh, walang uh, pet bottles. No? The Senate has embarked on a uh, no, pero siguro realistically, less use of pet bottles, less use of paper. So, uh, supposedly, um, our invitations include that uh, statement na please bring your own tumbler. So, Tontuwa ako that the Vice President uh, on her own brought it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so anyway, uh, sabi ko nga, administrative matter lang yon. I appreciate that. Uh, on the agenda today are the proposed budgets under the fiscal year 2023 NEP of the following. DepEd with an appropriation of 666,252,738,000 pesos. National Academy of Sports with 226,558,000 pesos. National Book Development Board, 64,572,000 pesos. National Council for Children's TV, 32,070,000 pesos. Philippine High School for the Arts, 100,895,000. And Early Childhood Care and Development Council, 59,415,000 pesos. Uh, I'd like to mention that um, the National Museum hosted us for the um, hearings of the cultural agencies yesterday, so we already submitted their budget. But because they are part of the DepEd family, uh, the uh, head, Jeremy Barnes, is still here. And of course, dear colleagues, kung may pahabol kayong tanong, but I'm sure Jeremy is here more to ask for support. <laughs> um, nandyan siya. Anyways, but submitted na ang budget niya. So before I formally begin, I will do away with all my opening statements, but I need to tell the Vice President face-to-face -face kami na maraming salamat sa inyong face-to-face -face directive. Because in, uh, in, the same, in the same hearing, dear colleagues, that I had with CHED SUCs, binanggit ko doon na bakit ang DepEd, very clear ang directive, na kailangan na mag-face-to-face -face ang mga bata. Samantalang yung mga SUCs natin, state universities and colleges, colleges including, dear chairman, our beloved UP, <laughs> Madam Senate President Pro Temp, our beloved UP, sa mga kasamahang kong ta, ang aming minority floor leader, they are, I had a, a table made of, uh, of uh, the levels of face-to-face -face that they are doing, and there are only 34 SUCs that are basically doing primarily face-to-face. -face. Yung bang 75% of their classes are in face-to-face. -face. The rest are even doing much, much, much less. And in my own uh, random uh, survey, because my daughters just graduated, so they still have friends, their teammates, all of the kids that I surveyed in UP, except kung pre-med, online. 100%, not even 50%. Kaya sabi ko, I had no choice but to mention that in the briefing of DepEd, uh, it was made very clear that your directive, Madam Vice President Secretary, is very clear that face-to-face. -face. Uh, and meron pang nagdahilan sa akin na kasi mas safe daw, may study na mas safe ang mga bata. So sabi ko, so yung mga young, ayan, may the record show tumatawa si Senator Bato on my right side. Sabi ko, lahat naman tayo may vulnerability at some point, di ba? And those who are very vulnerable, of course, will be given some kind of leeway. But the general rule is, kailangan pumasok. And I thank you for the example that you have set for DepEd, Madam Vice President, um, Secretary. So on that note, let me quickly acknowledge the senators who are here with me. Uh, our chairman of the Committee on, on um, Finance, uh, Chairman Sani Angara, our, our Senate President Pro Temp, Senator Lauren Legarda, um, at the far end, Senator um, Francis Tolentino, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, on my right, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, and then Senator Risa Monteveros, and Senator Coco Pimentel, and Senator Bong Revilla was sitting at the end at some point today, um, and uh, Senator, our, our Senate President was also present. So, um, on that note, the order of presentation shall be DepEd, Early Childhood, National Academy of Sports, National Book Development Board, National Council for Children's Television, Philippine High School for the Arts, 
may I ask the indulgence of my dear colleagues that we allow all the presentations to, to, continue, to be continued because if we start asking questions, uh, naiiwan na yung iba at hindi na napepresent yung budget nila. So please uh, indulge us on this and allow the, the presentations to finish. Um, on that note, um, I believe that uh, DepEd has a presentation, but uh, Madam Vice President, uh, Secretary, if you, if you want to say something before we proceed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Honorable Cayetano. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Your Honors, we thank you for this opportunity of presenting the budget proposal of the Department of Education. With me are DepEd's undersecretaries and assistant secretaries, as well as our directors, both from the central office and the regions who came with us in order to help in addressing questions or concerns relative to our department's proposed budget. We have here the Chief of Staff of DepEd, Yusek Epimako Densing. For Finance, we have Yusek Annalyn Sevilla and ASEC Omar Romero. For Admin, we have here ASEC Chris Arnuco. For Legal, we have Yusek Brady De Castro and ASEC Amanda Nograles Santiago. For Governance and Field Operations, we have here USEC Rebsi Escobedo and ASEC Francis Bringas. For Curriculum and Instruction, we have USEC Joer Gaviola and ASEC Almatorio. For Alternative Learning System, we have ASEC GH Ambat. Legislative and External Partnerships, we have USEC Gerard Chan. Bureau of Human Resource and Development, USEC Gloria Mercado. Youth Affairs and Special Concerns, ASEC Dexter Galvan. What I will be presenting is the proposed budget allocation in accordance with the National Expenditure Program. Um, before, before we proceed, um, Madam Vice President, may I just acknowledge the presence online of Senators Po and Senators Estrada. Welcome Po, and I am not sure if you caught our simple rules that will ask questions at the end of all the presentations. Salamat. Assalamu alaikum. Madayaw, maayong adlaw ka ninyong tanan. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Learning recovery, resilience, and unity. This encapsulates what we want to achieve in the next six years. The pandemic has greatly affected basic education and has robbed the youth of their learning, participation, and aspirations. We must fight back. We must recover. And we must start now. Your honors, I am pleased to present to you our proposed budget for 2023. We will lay down our measures to ensure the safe reopening of in-person classes, the basic education statistics, the department's plans for fiscal year 2023 and beyond, our fiscal year 2023 budget proposal summary, and the department's performance targets. Your honors, enshrined in the Constitution and our mission as an agency using our four core values as guideposts. Your Honors, we have successfully reopened all public and private schools last August 22, and we are elated that we have not recorded any major bottlenecks during this school year's opening. Nonetheless, we are fully aware that the COVID-19 virus still lingers and may still affect the overall conduct of in-person classes. That is why we are implementing measures to ensure that our learners and school personnel are protected. Your Honors, we recognize the importance of vaccination as a significant line of defense for our safe conduct of in-person classes. We are closely coordinating with the Department of Health to accelerate vaccination drives for our learners and personnel. However, while we do this, we continue to implement a non-discriminatory policy in our schools. We allow the unvaccinated and vaccinated to participate in classes while strictly adhering to minimum public health standards. 
Aside from vaccination efforts, we are enforcing minimum public health standards to ensure that all learners and school personnel are protected in school. We will strictly implement the wearing of masks. We will ensure that all schools have hand washing facilities. We will partner with LGUs and various sectors in each community. We will accelerate all ongoing repairs in time for November 2. And we are doubling our efforts to pre-deploy temporary learning spaces in places where they are most in need. Next to your honors, here are the basic education statistics. Basic education enrollment, as expected, suffered a decline in 2020, losing almost a million learners. However, enrollment has since recovered in 2021, surpassing pre-pandemic figures. You will notice that the enrollment recovery in 2021 happened only in public schools expressed in blue bars. Since enrollments in private schools expressed in pink bars continue to decline. This is something that we need to think about. We need to find ways to keep this small and medium private schools financially viable. We need to come up with more ways to support private schools on top of the GASPE and voucher programs. The alternative learning systems enrollment also suffered a sharp decline in 2020 for more than 800,000 to merely 674,000 in 2022. However, it started to recover in 2021 with more than 667,000 enrollees. Almost 80% of schools are Department of Education managed and 79% are purely elementary schools. There is a wide disparity in the number of schools between elementary and secondary. While integrated schools are the easiest way to expand access to secondary education, there is a need to ensure access to it through other means. While public schools continue to increase during the pandemic, private schools continue to decline. The 1,179 schools are a combination of 334 temporary closures, 118 permanent closures, and 727 schools with zero enrollment. Likewise, the 632 in school year 2021-2022 is a combination of temporary closures, permanent closures, and schools with zero enrollment. Here is the breakdown of the number of schools by region. The big three regions, Calabarzon, Central Luzon, and Western Visayas, have the most number of schools nationwide, while CAR has the least number of schools, having only a little more than 2,000 schools. Next are the department's outcome indicators. This data shows our dismal performance in the three international large-scale assessments. The results of 2019 TIMMS, 2019 SEA PLM, and 2018 PISA confirm that we have huge issues as far as the equality of education, and we will confront these head on. This is not the time to be onion skinned. This is the time to address the bottom line. Your honors, with your help, we can reverse this poor performance. Based on TIMMS 2019, 81% of our grade four learners could not perform simple math operations, solve simple word problems, or read bar graphs and tables. Moreover, 87% do not understand basic science concepts. Meanwhile, among grade five students, 90% have poor reading skills and 83% poor math skills based on SEA PLM 2019. As for grade nine students, 81% can't deal with basic math problems. 81% have trouble understanding texts of moderate length and 78% cannot recognize correct explanations for scientific phenomena or draw valid conclusions from given data. 
This is based on PISA 2018. This is our core issue, and with your help, we will focus on addressing this within the term of President Marcos. Net intake rate is the percentage of the population at the official kindergarten, school entrance age who are new entrants and who are of the same age. On the other hand, gross intake rate is the total number of new entrants in kindergarten regardless of age, expressed as a percentage of the population at the official school entrance age for that grade. Both net and gross intake rate showed that kindergarten intake rate is relatively unaffected during the two years of school closures as it posted upward trends. As expected, due to the enrollment decline in 2020, enrollment rates net and gross have declined but showed slight recovery in 2021. NER and GER for junior high school declined in 2020, but recovered sharply in 2021, surpassing the pre-pandemic performance. NER and GER for junior high school in both 2020 and 2021 are unaffected by the challenges posed by the pandemic. Senior high school learners continue to enroll despite difficulties. The increase in net and gross enrollment are both substantial. Gender parity index is a statistical measure that provides a numerical value of female to male ratio for an indicator. The value of perfect parity is one. If the value is below one, it means that boys are in advantage position. And if the parity value is more than one, boys are in disadvantage position. Our data shows that we are in perfect parity in elementary, but we start losing our boys in junior high school. Completion rate is a measure of efficiency. Percentage of grade 1, 7, 11 entrants who finished grade 6, 10, 12 respectively. Our data shows that completion rate in elementary has reached the 100% mark in 2021 from 82.5% in 2020. The same trend can be seen in junior high school after suffering a decline in 2020. It recovered substantially in the following year, which reached the 100% mark. Your honors, junior high school, senior high school also shows a sharp increase from 70% to 98%. This happened because of the sharp increase in enrollment in both junior high school and senior high school. This is the national average on ratios. It may appear that our classroom to learner ratio is already in a real state, but there are disparities at the school level simply because the enrollment in every school varies. The department also has a reliable learning recovery initiative as we try to normalize the education system operation and address the learning gaps. Learning gaps are the difference between what the learners are expected to have learned in a certain grade level versus what they have learned up to that point. These gaps are often compounding. The key outcome of the department's recovery planning and success is ensuring that learning gaps are identified and address among all learners, especially the most vulnerable ones. If learning gaps are not addressed, learners are likely to fall further and further behind due to the skills and knowledge they have missed. Obviously, this poses a major challenge for both educators and learners alike. Your honors, we will focus on learning recovery efforts particularly in providing interventions on learning remediation, addressing social emotional functioning, mental health and well-being, and professional development of teachers. With this, we are committed to implement full face-to-face -face classes with some considerations on unique situations where blended will be allowed. However, we will be prioritizing key stage one or kinder to grade three for in-person classes. Your honors, here are the 15 strategies for that our teachers will be utilizing 
to accelerate learning or to address learning gaps. Now, given the current state of basic education, what are our plans under the new administration? Your Honors, Basic Education Development Plan 2030 developed by the DepEd team to a highly consultative process will be our guidepost in improving the quality of education with some adjustments based on the priorities of the Marcos administration. Bed B showcased four pillars which represent the challenges we face and the objectives we will pursue. This framework will be the anchor of all programs, projects, and activities of the department. Bed P has been designed to ensure that our learners will acquire 21st century skills which allow them to contribute to the eight aspirations illustrated in the slide. The process is guided by the core values of makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. This is to ensure holistic development. To achieve the expected outcomes, each pillar will have several strategies which will be the basis for program implementation and policy development, including budget utilization. Each strategy will be achieved through several outputs. Just to highlight pillar three, which is our current battle cry, we will be revisiting the alignment of curriculum and the methods of instruction. Number two, we aim to strengthen the capacity of our teachers and instructional leaders on curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Number three, we will assess closely the learning progress of learners in areas of disadvantage. Number four, we will ensure learning resources availability. And number five, we will strengthen consultations on curriculum, instruction, and assessment, making it more dynamic and responsive to changing global education landscape. Your Honors, DepEd has submitted to UNESCO our country statement, which the President will present at the United Nations Transforming Education Summit 2022 on September 19, 2022. The country statement will set the trajectory of Philippine education in achieving the 2013 SDG Global Agenda for Education and at the same time address education issues in the country. In the said country statement, we highlighted the following. Number one, reaffirming national and international commitments. Number two, prepare learners for the future. Number three, reopen in-person classes. Number four, ensure inclusion and equity. Number five, foster digital learning and citizenship. Number six, expand and empower the teacher force. Number seven, reimagine governance. And number eight, ensure adequate funding. Next is the summary of the fiscal year 2023 budget proposal of the Department of Education. These tables show DepEd's 2023 proposal against the 2023 National Expenditure Program, or the NEP, submitted by the President to Congress, broken down into personal services, maintenance and other operating expenses, and capital outlay. The NEP is 17.8% lower than the DepEd's proposed budget, amounting to a difference of over $144 billion. Comparing the 2022 GAA against the 2023 NEP, there is an increase of 12.7% or 75 billion pesos. Many programs achieve significant funding increases, most notably the school-based feeding program with a 71.3% increase, new construction of classrooms at 85.9%, the senior high school voucher program at 137.9%, and the Gabaldon restoration and conservation with the biggest share of increase at 292%. Of course, with increases also come with decreases, starting with the Child Protection Program with an 82.2% decrease from over 26 million in the 2022 JA. It is now over 4 million under the 2023 NEP. Development and management of bilateral and multilateral education projects 
with a 79.1% decrease. Indigenous Peoples Education or IPED program with 63% or 90.9 million. DEPED computerization program with 24.4% decrease. And while not as significant as the others, the last mile schools program also had a loss of 0.7% or 10 million pesos. It is also noteworthy that while the quick response fund allocated to the department remained at 2 billion pesos budget, the DEPED is proposing for a significant increase in its funding given the massive backlog of classroom repairs damaged by calamities, putting DEPED in a quicksand situation which it cannot immediately prevent or get out of. In addition, several key programs of the department were left unfunded under the 2023 NEP, most notably the site validation and preliminary and detailed engineering activities, which helps DEPED and DPWH confirm a site's readiness for construction activities. The provision of priority school health facilities is also funded under the 2022 GAA, but are now unfunded under the 2023 NEP. And the special education program, which has been a fixture for learners with disabilities, is unfortunately unfunded. Despite this, the budgets for BEF electrification has been restored, which amounts to 489 million pesos. DEPED also continues to provide basic education resources to support the K-12 program with 11 million science and math equipment, 427,438 pieces of tech book equipment, 82,090 ICT packages, and 4.6 million textbooks and instructional materials. In line with this, DEPED is committed to catching up and providing more basic education inputs for our learners in fiscal year 2023, proposing for the following, 10,000 new teaching items, 2,739 new classrooms, 2,358 classrooms repaired or rehabilitated, 16,027 sets of school seats, 163 BEF electrification sites upgraded and energized, 38 above dawn and heritage buildings restored, and 88 last mile schools. This stays true with the 1.7 million beneficiaries of the school-based feeding program, 1.2 million grantees of the government assistance and subsidies or the ESC program for private junior high school, 1.1 million grantees of the GAS senior high school voucher program, and 109 1,233 grantees of joint delivery voucher for senior high school tech book livelihood specializations. DEPED will continue to provide professional development for all our personnel through training of the human resource development for personnel in schools and learning centers as we aim to train 311,100 teachers and teaching related staff. DEPED will continue to provide the needs of the learners and our personnel by upskilling and reskilling them to ensure the delivery of the highest quality of service. Here are our performance targets until 2030 enshrined in the Basic Education Development Plan. One of the major findings of sector analysis during the formulation of the Basic Education Development Plan was the education underspending of the government. The Education 2013 Framework for Action proposed two benchmarks as crucial reference points. Allocate at least 4% to 6% of GDP to education. And or allocate at least 15% to 20% of public expenditure to education. This table presents a modest target for education spending that by 2030, the education budget is at 4% of GDP and 18% of the national budget. However, if the government is capable of achieving higher budget prior to 2030, it would give DepEd extra muscle to achieve its targets. This 
table shows our target on participation through net enrollment rate. We hope to get all school-aged children to participate in the education system to address non-participation. As previously presented, we already hit the target for 2030, but we expect stabilization of these efficiency indicators this school year. Our target is to get all learners to complete basic education. Here is DepEd's baseline performance on reading and mathematics, especially in grade 3, grade 6, and grade 10. This shows the performance of grade 3 in mathematics. The blue line represents the business as usual scenario, while the orange line represents our desired level of performance expressed in range. Here is the reading proficiency of grade 3 learners. Kinder to grade 3 are crucial years of schooling. While the baseline is relatively high compared to previews, we are targeting higher performance. I personally believe that if we successfully address the reading and comprehension issues, everything will follow. So we need to focus on formative years where rapid brain development happens. For the mathematics proficiency of grade six learners, mathematical ability is very important for if we want our graduates to be analytical and be able to make better decisions in career and life. We cannot settle for the business as usual scenario. On reading proficiency of grade six learners, this performance will be addressed in the long term if we address the problems in kinder to grade three in the medium term. We need to allow our teachers to focus on teaching, liberate them from administrative work and provide targeted capacity development interventions. Targets are ambitious. So we need to make bold interventions. On mathematics proficiency of grade 10 learners, our baseline is very low, but we will not settle for the business as usual scenario because our learners deserve better than this. On reading proficiency of grade 10 learners, your honors, to achieve these ambitious targets, we need a unified effort that every centavo we spend contributes to the achievement of targets. We would be needing the consistent support from Congress to make all of this happen. The following 10 action points are critical if you want to accelerate the improvement of learning outcomes. These will require the support of the cabinet and Congress in ensuring funds for our priorities. Your honors, we seek your support in pushing for these legislative agenda, which we think are crucial in the reforms and interventions that we intend to pursue. Dagang salamat, maraming salamat. Thank you. Is, is that all for the DepEd? To yes. the Office of the Secretary. So yes, I, Your Honor, on. that is for DepEd. Uh, we did not include uh, attached agencies yes. in our presentation. They'll make their own presentation. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we'll proceed with the other presentations. Uh, next is Early Childhood Care and Development Council. Uh, to present is Mr. Romel Isip, OIC. And then just be ready to follow would be National Book Development Board. Hello, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Pia Caetano, to all honorable uh, senators, uh, BP Secretary Sara Duterte, uh, to all the uh, DepEd executives and officials and uh, colleagues from attached agency, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Uh, for the presentation of the ECCD Council, we will uh, go first for the overview of our FY 2023 budget. Next slide, please. Okay. So, okay. On this slide, uh, it shows the comparison of our ECCD uh, net proposed budget endorsed by the DBM against our approved budget for 2022. 
for FY22, the total uh, 2022, the total approved budget of ECCD amounts to 255.216 million, while the NEP proposed budget endorsed by the DBM amounts to 62.898, or only 25% of the total FY2022 budget. The significant decrease is due to non-allocation of the flagship program of ECCD, which is the establishment of the National Child Development Center. The next slide, please. Uh, the next slide is a comparison of our 2023 original proposed submitted budget uh, to DBM against the NEP proposed budget endorsed by the DBM. Originally, our proposed budget for FY 2023 is 508 million, composed of 59 million under tier one and uh, 448 under tier two. This is to ensure that we will be able to reach our targeted number of recipients in 2023. Since there's no allocation for the establishment of NCDC in the tier one budget, we have proposed to include the following in our tier two budget. First is the establishment of NCDC and the conversion or the financial support for, the, for modeling and conversion of the existing daycare center to child development center. And second, we propose additional budget for the HRD program to ensure that the physical structure be complemented with quality subcomponent of the program implementation. So comparing with the original proposed budget for FY 2023 with the net proposed budget, it is shown that 12% of the total proposed budget was endorsed by the DBM. Included in the budget cut was the allocation for our flagship program. Okay. So for the previous slides and this slide, shows the unmatching budgetary requirements of ECCD and the net proposed budget as a major concern in the non-allocation of the flagship program of ECCD. So in this regard, we would like to request for the additional 260 million to budget in order for us to continue our flagship program and one of our mandates of ensuring the ECCD programs and services are up to date and indeed beneficial to children zero to four years old. So in summary, the ECCD Council proposes for an additional 260 million to the 62.9 million of a net proposed budget uh, with a total proposed budget or revised proposed budget of 323 million for fiscal year 2023. Corresponding target for our proposed budget or requirement uh, for 2023, the ECCD Council shall prioritize expanding and ensuring access to quality ECCD program and services for children aged zero to four years old. If our proposed uh, budget is granted, we will be able to establish additional 50 NCDC for the 50 LGUs and 25 LG, uh, assistance for 25 LGUs or 250 daycare center for modeling daycare center into child development center. And also, we will continue the provision of HRD program for 1,813 ECCD service provider and increase awareness and accountability among the stakeholders, uh, communities, families, nationwide through the various IECA activities and monitoring and evaluation uh, mechanism as well as technical assistance for all stakeholders. Going to our uh, budget status for 2022, the total appropriation of ECCD amounts to 287 million, of which 255 is under current appropriation and uh, 31 million comprise of continue, continuing appropriation. For the utilization, as of July, a total of 60.74 million or 21% of the total budget for FY 2022 was obligated, leaving us a balance of 226 million which is already planned to be utilized by third and fourth quarter of this year. But unfortunately, all the project program and activities of, uh, of ECCD Council was put on hold due to, uh, due to the issuance of MC3. For the agency, a you know, brief uh, agency accomplishment, I'd like to focus on this. On ensuring the equitable access to quality ECCD, our flagship program, the establishment of NCDC, 
uh, have already reached to 865 or 50 percent of total 1,634 cities, municipalities. And also, uh, the council have also developed and implemented uh, the, the alternative mode of de delivery for learning and continuity for zero to four years old. One of which is the center-based program in alternative venue, we call it CBFAB, which was developed in response with the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic. The council also developed the home-based ECCD program, which aimed to address the holistic needs of children specifically located in far-flung areas, geographically isolated and disadvantaged area, and those who have difficulties in accessing child development center. Taking up, talking about the learning continuity, the council have also adapted the guidelines for the safe reopening of early childhood education to ensure that the return of zero to four years old in child development center are well planned, adequately resourced, and well co coordinated with the, with the national and local stakeholder. So for the human resource development, in ensuring the quality of the ECCD service delivery uh, in the country, the council continue to provide human resource development to ECCD service provider and stakeholder in the country. As of this year, 20,711 ECCD stakeholder and service provider have undergone this HRD program. And for, for our multi-sectoral collaboration, uh, to help and ensure sustainability, the Council also engaged into multi-sectoral partnership with the national government agencies, local and international non-government organization and organization from private sector. And the following advocacy social mobilization activities for provincial and uh, city municipal uh, ECCD stakeholder have been continuous implementing by the ECCD program. And advocacy, we also develop and produce different advocacy in SOCMOB program and materials for general public. Okay? Uh, although not included in the original presentation that we submitted, we would like to highlight this uh, slide, uh, the importance of ensuring access to quality ECCD program and services through the Philippine Child, uh, Childhood Care and Development Longitudinal Study this is study funded by Australian government and conducted by CMU Inotech, ASR, and UNICEF that, that explored the effect of early childhood care uh, development on the learning experience and performance of kindergarten students through grade two and in the Philippines. On the key result in this study was that uh, the children who attended the preschool, and especially those who attended frequently, sc scored significantly higher in literacy, mathematics, and social emotional skill. So the type of preschool also made a difference between the student attending the community-based private nursery or national child development center in performing higher or three domains compared to the home-based program. This is also the reason why the council has developed the home-based program that is part uh, with the national standard of ECCD service delivery. On the last part, for our uh, challenges, you know, uh, our utmost challenge is the budgetary, budgetary allocation for our flagship program, which is the establishment of NCDC. Originally, the budget for this program was provided by the PAGCOR contribution under RA 10410, which was uh, amount to 2.5 billion. Unfortunately, the fund provided by the PAGCOR contribution was only enough for 50% of the total number of cities, municipalities in the country leaving the other half with no established ECD, ECCD resource center. The strong motive to mo provide universal intervention of the ECCD program through the establishment of this center is the reason for the continued request for the additional budget under GAA from the DBM since 2020. However, our budget proposal were not considered in the NEP. It is only through the Congressional and Senate instruction that we given allocation for this program. We really hope that this funding be considered a continued since having a strong foundation for Filipino children in the early years is very important if what if we want to have competent lifelong learners in the near future. That's all. Uh, thank you very much.
Okay, thank you. Just be prepared for questions later, no? Thank you. Um, I mistakenly said the next will be national board, no? But um, based on this uh, pre-agreed upon list, it's National Academy of Sports. So are you ready? Yeah, okay. So Professor Joy Re Reyes, Executive Director, will uh, make the presentation. Thank you. And then after that is the National Board, National Book Development Board. VP Sara, Madam Secretary, um, Honorable uh, Senators, um, DepEd family, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. With your permission, I shall now proceed to briefly present the milestones of the National Academy of Sports. Can we, um, in the, okay, thank you. We have defined and outlined sports integrated secondary education as our major program to support our organizational outcome based on our strategic roadmap. We have established our comprehensive admission policy and procedures entitled NAS Annual Search for Competent, Exceptional, Notable, and Talented Student Athlete Scholars, or NAS and SAS. This admission policy is designed to conduct talent identification among aspiring student athletes from all sectors of society, including indigenous peoples, persons with disabilities, and other marginalized sectors. Likewise, taking into consideration SDG 5 on gender equality and SDG 10 on reduced inequality. The nascent SAS was promoted last year through national sports associations, DepEd regional offices, and social media platforms. The slide shows the distribution in eight focus sports, and we are hoping to further strengthen our talent search and identification through robust and state-of-the-art data management system and research. We have developed the NAS curriculum framework. Can I have the next slide, please? This was followed by the establishment of academic programs, systems, and processes. For SY 2021-2022, the classes, sports training, and support services were conducted remotely due to restrictions brought about by the pandemic. We have utilized the learning management system of the Department of Education. In no time, NAS will aim to develop its own learning management system and integrate the latest digital technologies in the delivery of the classes, sports training, and student services. We have developed the NAS sports training model using established evidences and existing researches. This model is being delivered by our well-known and top-notch coaches. We aim to continue recruiting high-caliber sports coaches, both within the local and international landscapes. Despite the limitations brought about by the pandemic, we have continuously found ways to expose our eligible student athletes to various local and international competitions. We are proud to share that our student athletes have bagged three gold medals and three bronze medals in the recent Smart uh, Sports Foundation National Online Pumsei Championships. We are likewise honored to inform that one of our student athletes has conquered international arena by finishing in first place in the 2021 World Taekwondo Pumsei Challenge. We have also bagged three gold medals during the 2022 Asian Cadet and Junior Taekwondo Championships. With the easing of health restrictions, we want our students to experience more face-to-face -face competition platforms locally and internationally. We have provided our students with comprehensive student support services, placed a high premium on sports nutrition, and thus provided them daily food allowance. As we transition to on-site training and classes, we aim to continue to provide them with comprehensive student support services and world-class sports nutrition program. 
we also have developed the NAS playbook con containing all guidelines and policies to ensure the safety and health of all our stakeholders as means to support our upcoming on-site operations. We shall procure more equipment and resources to ensure the highest safety standards for our students and employees during on-site operations. With your permission, honorable senators, we now present the development of NAS Campus for Phase 1. Last June 14, 2022, distinguished guests, including several honorable members present here, have attended the inspection as a preview of the NAS main campus in the new Clark City in Kappa Starlac. The completion of the NAS main campus and the foreseen continuous usage of facilities by the current generation and many others to follow is in line with SDG 9 on industry innovation and infrastructure. The employment opportunities and growth of nearby economies and domestic markets is in line with SDG 8 related to decent work and economy and economic growth. In the speech of former President Rodrigo Duterte, he mentioned NAS and all government and private partners that contributed to the construction of this new and significant institution despite inherent limitations of the pandemic. NAS strongly believes that cooperation and collaboration are essential to succeed in our mandate. We continuously engage in benchmarking activities, both online and face-to-face -face with local and international sports and academic institutions, sharing of best practices, and looking into the possibility of student personnel exchange programs and technology and research collaboration. In terms of enrollment, we have just completed the admission process and onboarded our new batch of student athletes. For the school year, 2022-2023, uh, we welcomed a total of 118 student athletes. With the presented uh, milestones and future plans, we now have the honor to present to you our proposed 2023 budget. Comparing our 2023 original proposal versus NEP, key items were cut down as follows. For training and scholarship, reduced by 86.3 million intended for meals, nutrition, and sports uniforms. Number two, travel expenses reduced by 40 million intended for students to participate in various international competitions and benchmarking activities. Supplies and materials decreased by 27.1 million intended for school operations and dormitory supplies. Proposed budget for HTC was also removed, amounting to 27 million we requested this as we continuously adhere to become world-class sports facility in the country. The expertise we I are focused but not limited to, limited to improving our compliance to international sports standards and facilities like hiring foreign coaches, sports science experts, and other professional service specialists that, that, are, uh, that are beneficial to the NAS system. While we acknowledge that currently our budget utilization rate is low, this is due to various factors outside our control. To name some, as to the low number of enrollees, specifically the promotion and recruitment of potential qualified student athletes, travel was restricted. There are no sports competitions being conducted locally, neither international ben benchmarking activities were also not allowed. The activity planned, I'm sorry, the, the academy planned to conduct a series of face-to-face -face promotional activities. However, due to the absence of NAS bids and awards committee, we cannot proceed with the procurement of the line items related to it. The zero procurement was due to the lack of plantilla position. As of June 30, we only have four plantilla position, including yours truly. Only about 7% or 19.6 million of our MOOE was utilized as of June 30, 2022, which is mainly the salaries and scholarship grants to student athletes. This is due to the lack of regular plantilla position who will compose the back committee that will facilitate the procurement of the academy. 
The 2022 budget was based on face-to-face -face learning modality, whereas the actual classes and training were done online, resulting to lower expenditure for meals, nutrition, supplements, and dormitories of the student athletes. The bulk of our MOE, amounting to 80, point, uh, 80 million or 36.4%, shall be used for scholarship grants. This pertains to the monthly stipend of the student athletes as provided for in the scholarship agreement. Specific nutrition needs, such as food supply and nutrition supplementation, sports apparel, mental health and career guidance, toolkits, packet program with their parents or guardians. Our Student Athlete Support Services Division is focused on ensuring that our student athletes are provided with and, with and uh, educated on the right diet and nutrition, thus the bulk for food and nutrition supplements. This is in line with the achievement of SDG 2 on zero hunger, number three on good health and well-being, and number four on quality education. The second largest chunk of our budget, amounting to 30.3 million, or 13.8%, shall be used for dormitory supplies and equipment, routine immunization, antigen swab, medical and dental equipment, learning resources, textbooks, training equipment for the eight sports, for the eight focus sports. To balance this out, our academic division budget is focused on programs for its continuous development of sports integrated curriculum and learning resources both for print and non-print. We have also include, included training and competition uniforms and supplies to cater to the increasing number of student athletes. The third is budgeted expenditure for professional services. We provided budget for the hiring of HTC as we continuously strive to deliver our mandate under the law. Since NAS is classified as a boarding school, we provided the budget of 18 million or 8.2% of the MOOE for the use of the athletes' village to cover for BCDA's maintenance and operating expenses. Lastly, with our campus facilities fully turned over to NAS, hopefully by, by the first quarter of 2023, and in full swing operation, we allotted 12.2 or 5.6% for the security, janitorial, and maintenance services. We wish to appeal to the generosity and wisdom to our honorable sponsors and to the honorable members of the Senate, at least retain our 2022 GAA level for 2023 budget. We are fervently requesting again the additional of 57.4 million for 2023. As we anticipate full swing operations in next year and the increasing number of students, which we target to reach by 210 enrollees next year, it would be difficult for us to realize our mandate with the meager resources provided in the 2023 NEP. We look forward for your support in our singular, steadfast goal of providing our student athletes with quality education as they pursue their interest, hone their talents, and chase their dreams in sports and nurturing them to become, to become our future Olympians who will bring pride and honor to the flag and country. We humbly urge everyone to join us and fervently hope to receive your generous support in achieving our programs and plans for the Filipino student athletes as we blaze the trail from home to podium, from national pride to global achievement. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, E.D. Jan. Thank you very much, E.D. Joy Reyes. Uh, let's now go to National Book Development Board, Mr. Dante Ang, the chairperson. And then kindly be ready, National Council for Children's Television. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Cayetano, Honorable Senators of the Committee, um, the Vice President, our Secretary for Dep Ed. I am Dante Ang. I have the pleasure of presenting to you this afternoon the um, National Book Development Board. May I uh, request the Secretary to show our presentation, please? Go to slide two. Second slide. So as a brief recap of what we do at the National Book Development Board, this slide, next one, please. Summarizes the, um, next slide, please.
basically the problems we face in the, <clears throat> the NBDB is to address the learning poverty in the Philippines. We work with the DepEd to um, help uh, elevate the quality of, of uh, learning materials, including textbooks. We basically help the publishing industry um, in the Philippines. And as we have done our work, uh, we've noticed that, um, that the Filipinos are really, is a reading culture when we found that they're actually, we're actually importing more books than we are exporting to a factor of 24 to one. This slide shows you basically a, a list of the programs that the NBDB does. We offer grants, offer incentives and subsidies. We offer um, uh, capacity building through education to our publishers. We promote our works through um, book fairs and other events abroad. We also organize research programs and promote readership in the Philippines. Next slide. Excuse me. There we go. All right. Next one, please. Next slide, please. Uh, no. I apologize. Let me just. Pardon me, Senator, until we, I think we just had the wrong presentation up on the, on the screen. I apologize, um, Senator. No we'll problem. Do you want me to go to the next? Will it take a minute? I, or is it I think we're good. Okay. Are we? Just, just go to slide four so that we don't repeat. Huh? Oh, Senator, if you don't mind, may we go to the next speaker just to economize on the time? I no apologize problem. for that. No problem. Um, Let's go to National Council for Children's TV Television, uh, Ms. Atienza, the Executive Director, and then Be Ready, Philippine High School for the Arts. Our VP and Secretary, um, Sara Duterte, and the Honorable senators and the entire DepEd family and my colleagues from the attached agencies, isang makabatang hapon po sa ating lahat. We are from the National Council for Children's Television. This is a 30-seconder only. Okay, so it doesn't play um, because we have um, we have a gift for you. Uh, we we are to present a teaser of a child-friendly TV program probably later, and the National Council for Children's Television is mandated to promote and encourage the production and broadcast 
of developmentally appropriate television programs for children. General functions, policy formulation. Next slide, please. Um, we have the child-friendly content standards and researches under this function. And of course, we monitor the broadcast television networks. There are 458 registered to NTC. Um, it falls under media monitoring. And we have the endowment fund per the law given by the PAGCOR and the PCSO. Thus, we produce or we give grants to independent producers. And also, last, we have the media literacy orientation services. Um, we, we serve the children. We call it Televibo. And then the Casa Mapa, Katuwang sa Mapanuring Panonood. It's um, uh, television and media parenting for our adults, for our guardians and parents. And of course, we have this understanding and utilizing media in teaching, integration of media literacy in the lessons of our educators. And also, um, next slide please. We have the annual DocuBata Festival. Um, it's a competition of um, documentary entries by, for, and about children all over the Philippines. And um, for the National Endowment Fund, we have, we have five grantees from the Knowledge Channel, Ready, Set, Treat, the Wellness Kada, Mang Lalakbay, we are supposed to, to show you the 30 seconder of Mang Lalakbay, and the Miriam's Online World, Mga Awit ni Pina. And these, um, some of these grantees of child-friendly TV programs, they show um, our culture, our, our arts, the cultura, cultural heritage, um, and the like. Next slide, please. For accomplishments, we have, um, we have um, 70 TV stations registered to National Council for Children's Television. And we are um, hopping from one region to another to reach our uh, content creators, representatives from different broadcast television networks to share the child-friendly content standards and the law that per section nine of the law, broadcast television networks should show 15, at least 15% daily airtime that they dedicate and allot such TV programs, the child TV and the child-friendly TV programs for the, um, for the children. For our 2023 budget proposal, as you can see, next slide, please. We, uh, for personal services, we have uh, 40 million 295, and uh, we have for MOOE we have 86 million 941 thousand. For COR capital outlay, we propose for 21 million and uh, 60, a total of 148 967. However, for the G. AA, um, we, we, we can see that the difference of the NEP for 2023 and resulting to a total only 41 million against 33 million 100, uh, 113. Difference of this is uh, the congressional initiative of our legislators. Um, more specifically, uh, uh, Senator Pia, thank you very much, Po. And then um, the budget utilization rate as of August is 56.15% uh, because this October we'll have the monitoring um, equipment and other activities that we conducted in September and will be conducted until December. So what are the proposed projects for 2023? We have the National Endowment Fund for Children's Television or the NEFC TV 2023 grants program. 
uh, you know, our dear senators, we only rely, depend in the yield interest of this uh, endowment fund uh, that we give to the grantees, to the independent producers. So we ask for fund subsidy for the production of more child television programs and the production and promotion of NCCT promotional materials such as infomercial, PSA, and the like. The DocuBata 2023 will be seven years old next year. And uh, we thank Department of Education. They support us in the form of memo. Thus, elementary and the high school, even the senior high school, joined the DocuBata all over the Philippines. And um, again, we thank the, our senator for, for supporting this DocuBata. Um, we also like to request for the fund for the broadcast of these child-friendly TV programs or the children's TV programs. And of course, the, the NCCT mini studio because when we went um, monitoring, these independent producers, they, they appealed and they lamented that they rent for the mini studio. Thus, uh, we wanted to help our independent producers. Kasi po, doon pa po binabawas ang kanilang pagrenta sa maliit na binibigay po sa interest ng endowment fund. So, and sometimes, or most, most of the times, they don't, uh, they don't join because it's really a meager amount uh, for the NFC TV, for the National Endowment Fund. And also, procurement of NCCT Mini Studio, of course, it's construction, and procurement of equipment for video production. This will greatly help our independent producers. They will be encouraged to join and uh, write stories for children, show children's television programs uh, that are educational. And um, also, we want to broadcast the children's television um, and the child-friendly TV programs for next year. 13 episodes. This is a one full season of DocuBata. And uh, one full season also rebroadcast of our Oyayi in 2017. And the 13 episodes also of the NFC TV. And nine episodes for this year uh, child TV program. Okay, I think um, this is also the same, the National Endowment Fund. I think uh, uh, our good senators have heard this already. And for our 2023 DocuBata, which highlights the, the year for NCCT, seventh year next year, and there are seven significant activities, the Lakbay DocuBata, DocuBata TV, Masterclass Classroom, Rewind, virtual screening, and hybrid awarding ceremony. Um, for the knowledge of our good senators and our DepEd family, we, we, we requested for the service of uh, the renowned documentarists in the, in the Philippines, like Mr. Howie Severino, like uh, Cara David, and... Um, and um, and everyone, and uh, help NCCT in the online masterclass uh, classroom and teaching the children and the youth for, for producing documentaries. And um, we have this in our proposal, the, the amount specifically for each one, the detailed under also the wish list and uh, we can provide the good senators um, of all of this. So um, we, we will not take much of the time. As to media monitoring, next slide please, because this is very important. The 15% compliance monitoring um, of NCCT to our broadcast television networks. And um, um, it's good to know that um, the broadcast television networks 
uh, registered under NCCT, there are 70, comply to the submission compliance of the 15% uh, that they show uh, child-friendly TV program. We can, we can give you po reports on this last year and even this first semester. And um, we will also validate the 15% compliance. Um, next year, we have this scorecard, uh, which uh, um, we have consulted experts in this scorecard, and we can furnish you the, the copy of this scorecard that will validate whether or not the, the a TV program is a child-friendly television program. I think um, that is all, um, Your Honors. And uh, if we want our children um, to see and uh, watch child-friendly television programs that are educational, informative, value-laden, and age-appropriate, shows that are rich in cultural her heritage of the Philippines, um, please help us, we appeal before you, uh, to give the Filipino children the media content that they deserve. Thank you very much po. Makabatang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you. Yung papakita mo, na naayos ba? Hindi? Naayos. 30 seconds lang naman yeah, yun, yes, di ba? Yes. Okay. Is there a problem? Hi. Go ahead. Kamusta? Ako nga pala si Kuya Bay, ang inyong manglalakbay. Kuya Bay! Ikaw nga pala ang aking best friend, si Toots. At ito naman si Manang Aki. Handa na ba kayo? Masaya ang mga aral habang naglalakbay ang hatid namin sa inyo tuwing linggo, 9.30 a.m. dito sa Manglalakbay. This one of the grants. Is it a grant? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Salamat. We'll talk about it more some later. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you po. Are we ready, um, NBDB? Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize for the glitches, but uh, I think it's only indicative of the uh, assistance that we need from you today. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. So this is basically a snapshot of what we try to do at the National Book Development Board. Basically, we, uh, we address reading in the Philippines, and that's relevant because we've seen in the news that the Filipino learners are suffering from what they call learning poverty, as identified by the World Bank. Basically, what we do is we try to help the publishing industry in the Philippines, uh, which has been ravaged by the uh, pandemic, as we all know. Um, one of the things that we try to change with work with the uh, publishers is to help to transform the books from being basically a social good into something that can be exported. And we believe we have creative talent to do that. Unfortunately now, though, that we are importing more books than we are exporting to a factor of 24 to 1. Next slide, please. So this slide basically gives you a enumeration of the things that we do at the NBDB, which is we offer grants, incentives, and subsidies. I think I showed you this the last time I was here. Uh, next slide, please. So 
Um, basically, our proposed uh, budget for 2023 was 381 million, uh, but the shortfall is uh, in the ballpark of 313 million. I think one thing that we'd like to call your attention there is for the last eight years, the NBDB has received an unqualified opinion from the COA. Next slide, please. Now, this is a busy slide, but I think what should draw your attention is the figure for 2021, where the NBDB uh, had a budget utilization of 99%. Next slide, please. So uh, for this year, uh, as of September 20, 2020, our BUR has already reached 68%. Next slide, please. So going back to our shortfall, as I said, our shortfall in NEP is in the ballpark of 313 million. What is in there is a uh, proposal for 68 million for the entire agency. Uh, and you could see that there are three basic baskets that uh, make up for that, for that 313 uh, shortfall. Personal services in the uh, amount of 15.5 million, MOOE in the amount of 216 million, and capital outlay in the ballpark of 82 million. Next slide, please. So this is uh, just another comparison from the GAA of 2022 uh, to the NEP of 2023. Uh, the only positive thing there is in the first basket um, that um, covers personal services. The rest of the items on the slide, MOOE, which has a limited list there, and capital outlay are all negative. Next slide, please. This is another comparison. I'm going through this because I'm only given 10 minutes. Um, you can go to slide 11. Okay. So I think despite our meager budget for 2022, we're proud to say that we've made a positive impact on the industry. Uh, we've seen a, um, a dramatic increase in ISBN number registrations from 2020 to 21, where in the previous years dating back to 2016, there was a decreasing number of ISBN applications. Uh, this is partly due to initiatives or interventions by the NBDB, including an MOA with the National Library of the Philippines, but also an initiative from the board to waive the registration for stakeholders, basically to capture the, uh, the data uh, for the industry. And regis by registering with the NBDB, this also, this also um, fast tracks the application process for the ISBNs. Um, so the uh, uh, half of the slide there on your right shows you the corresponding increase in the number of stakeholders that have been registering with the uh, NBDB. And I will breeze through the next following slides. Next. So despite our, our budget, you know, we're proud to say that the NBDB has actually uh, organized and executed more programs relative to our counterparts in ASEAN, and you can see that there. So I think we're getting to the crux of the matter. Yes. So part of our request um, here is for the NBDB to have access to 67 million that was funds that were left over from the predecessor of the agency, which is the IMC or the Instructional Materials Corporation, and later on the IMDC, the Instructional Materials Development Corporation. Now this is actually in the law that created NBDB, but uh, regrettably after 26 years, um, the present agency has yet to access these funds, and this would be very helpful particularly this year with such huge um, reductions from our proposed budgets to the NEP to fund many of our programs and capacity building projects. Next slide, please. So I think this is the most important slide of my presentation today, which is basically um, a snapshot of what we had proposed and what makes up for the shortfall. And the 21 item list on this slide basically is an order of priority for NBDB. You will notice there that, of course, the number one item, general administrative and support services, um, uh, has a shortfall of 128 million. Our showcase project, which is the book nook, um, was only given 7.6 million, where we asked 47 million. 
And there are other key projects there which are not funded under the NEP, the National Book Database, the Filipino Readability Tool, the Book Institute of the Philippines, where we hope to um, help our publishers um, improve their quality, et cetera. I believe these materials were given to the Secretary. Thank you. So um, just a little review of our showcase project, which is the Book Nook, which is, was started only in 2020. Um, basically, these are learning spaces that we try to organize, that we've organized across the Philippines. In the first year that we've rolled this out, we were successful in, in, um, in opening 50 or so Book Nook projects. Um, we hope to have more this year. Uh, 50, I believe, is our, pro our proposal. Um, we are on our way to that, despite the uh, reductions in our budget for, for this year. And for next year, we'd like to roll out even more. As of now, we are already uh, serving something like 5.7 Filipino readers uh, that include mainly children and young adults. The next slide shows you um, a map of where our book nook uh, projects are. You will notice that many of these uh, locations are in conflict areas, areas that lack electrification that would um, severely restrict their uh, uh, usage of, you know, gadgets uh, for reading books uh, and, you know, other remote areas. And as I said, we'd like to do more uh, if allowed. So just for those who need a recap of what Book Nook is, is basically a, a, uh, a learning space, mainly for children, but it's really actually containing books and other titles that appeal to the entire family. So the basic idea there is to make books accessible to people. It's not exactly quite a library, because libraries tend to be formal spaces, and sometimes young learners have um, insecurities or may feel intimidated going to a library because they have to be quiet, they have to be in uh, act properly. But you know, book nooks are in areas such as you know wet markets. Some of them are in mobile locations. And as I said, um, the main point here is to make books accessible to um, a young readers and help that important issue of, of about learning poverty in the Philippines. So this slide basically tells you how we set up a book nook. Um, Next slide, please. But basically, I think um, the key part there that I want to underscore is that the book nooks are organized in indigenous and remote areas, areas with poor internet connectivity and no electricity, and basically um, uh, places that, that need these materials the most. They are a good investment, as you see from this slide, that uh, we um, average uh, in terms of cost only 164 pesos per reader in 2021, which makes it a quite, I think, a reasonable investment in such a huge problem that the country faces with our learners. The following slides are merely, uh, I think this is a photo of the, um, of the, of the book nook. Uh, just to give you a big, quick run through of the other things that we are doing at the National Book Development Board, we are doing capacity building uh, through education, workshops, uh, on the entire value chain of the book publishing. Um, we are hoping to do uh, or create a Filipino readability tool, and none exists so far right now in our, in our language, un uh, unlike, it, um, unlike in English. We are continuing to do trade promotions, basically developing new markets for our local books, and uh, we been expanding this uh, this year also through uh, uh, participations in new events such as in the Sharjah United Arab Emirates. We do research projects, essentially out of capacity building programs, incentive programs, and grants. And of course, we work with the industry associations to help recognize books, partly also to incentivize them in improving their quality. Uh, I believe these materials are in your with your staff, and that includes my presentation, and we'll be ready with additional questions later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Chairman Dante Ang. And the last but not the least is the Philippine High School for the Arts, Professor Zunica. To our uh, Vice President and uh, Deputy Secretary, Honorable Sara Duterte, to our Madam Chair, uh, Senator Pia, at ating pong mga minamahal na mga senador, at sa ating DepEd family, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. 
Para po mapabilis ang ating presentasyon ay uh, unahin ko na po ang ating uh, budget uh, presentation, comparative budget for FY2023. So for total obligations, we have in here uh, 108 uh, million compared with the uh, approved NEP, which is uh, 103.7 million. There was a 3% decrease uh, in this uh, revised budget. And then for our comparative budget uh, by allotment, uh, this shows that uh, the, in 2022, the personal services was 36%. MOOE 60% and capital outlay 4%, while in 2023, PS is 39%, MOOE is 61%, and CO is down to 0%. For our work program, our curriculum development is ongoing, and uh, we are uh, introducing uh, reforms for our uh, curriculum so that th this will be relevant to our uh, uh, young generation. And then we also have our reaccreditation of ISO 9001-2015, which was originally awarded to us in 2018. And then one of the highlights of the year, even though uh, this was uh, done during the pandemic, we were very careful with health protocols. We had what we call the makisining sa makiling, tahanang bailihan, we're in uh, we partnered with LGUs, uh, namely Los Banos and Bae, and we uh, were able to educate 34 scholars who are not full-time scholars of the PHSA, which means that these are students from public, school, uh, public schools from the LGUs, and we gave them free education during the weekend. And they were able to complete already a one-semester program and their LGUs are now presenting them as performing groups, official performing groups. So one, that's one thing that we, we can be very proud of. Reasons for the decrease of the 2023 budget, uh, zero capital outlay based on national expenditure program for CY 2023 and uh, unfilled position. And then for our budget utilization rate, 2020, 81%, and the disbursement, disbursement, 89%. 2021, 84% for obligation and disbursement, 87, which is uh, due to the uh, pandemic. And then the, the quite low uh, numbers uh, were recorded only uh, in June, June 2022. So we are still midway through our uh, calendar year. Now concerns for well, uh, pending allocation of funds for our cre uh, creation of 13 non-teaching personnel, which is uh, mm -hmm. part of our request for our budget in 2023, and then uh, mm -hmm. implementation of the Safe Spaces Act in our campus. So mm -hmm. our reforms include limiting in, in three occupants per uh, dormitory as uh, recommended by the National Bureau of Investigation, and then mm -hmm. uh, strict curfew hours regular rounds of security and house parents, and then this one, male students occupy separate dormitory areas from uh, female uh, students. And then we, uh, we issued official statements regarding uh, our, the issues confronting us that uh, the PHSA will not tolerate any harassment in the school, and we have reached out to uh, our alumni and our students and then for our teachers, we revised our contract and we uh, put in there a colatilia wherein we have provisions for code of ethics among teachers to be observed. And then mandatory foster parents for students who are based in Mindanao and Visayas so that they will have uh, guardians in Luzon. And then this one, we introduced psychosocial counseling upon request from students and alumni. Ongoing investigation conducted by NBI and DepEd, as well as the PNP, the local police, who have already made recommendations for uh, better uh, or well, improved safety of our student learners. And then we continue conducting seminars on the Safe Spaces Act to students and their parents while they were online last month. And then to our personnel, personnel which includes our maintenance, kuyas, and ates, and uh, 
also our security guards and drivers. So lahat po, walang po pinalampas, lahat po ay nagtitraining po pagdating po sa safe spaces at para po maging ligtas ang ating uh, kapaligiran. Now, uh, because we already uh, uh, housing our students on site and uh, in our dormitory residences, uh, which is very challenging now, uh, we, we, uh, we deliver our food packs to their dorms, uh, which is not the usual uh, practice. And then hopefully uh, we can include uh, more CCTV cameras for uh, uh, the safety of our student learners. And then in terms of health, naman, uh, we encourage our students to bring their own personal utensils, water containers, beddings, pillows, and blankets. So far, uh, we met mga minor challenges. Konting ubot sipon lagnat. Either we isolate them or we send them home to their guardians so that uh, we will uh, uh, prevent transmission on campus. Now, for our um, reforms in the future, we hope to increase the number of house parents or our, our bantay to make sure that our, our children are very safe in, in campus. And then off campus, we need uh, an adult in charge um, authorized by the school to oversee their um, uh, activities. And without the uh, approval of the admin and without the guardians, uh, off campus activities are not allowed. So these are the mga strict mga protocols that we observe now. And then, uh, no prior approval, no off-campus activities. Wish lists, um, capital outlay, office equipment, furniture, communication, other machinery and equipment, technical and scientific equipment amounting to 4.835 million. Now we also added in there 1.491 of uh, for uh, maintenance and other operating expenses for our janitorial and security services so that our total uh, wish list is 6.276 million here are a few pictures from our makisining sa makiling this one is from bae laguna so you can see there are our young uh, scholars from public schools uh, during the weekend uh, they're already a uh, recognized performing group in the lgu and then second one is uh po. next one is uh, from los baños and uh, Los Banos also is uh, also assisting us um, in terms of improving our safety, health protocols, and also in terms of uh, risk reduction uh, uh, measures. And then for our students, um, our, our current students, uh, during even during the pandemic, um, they bagged 35 medals in international competitions. Uh, which is quite high, actually. There are so many uh, co competitions online. And then 20 medals in local competitions, um, including the annual national music competition for young artists. So our, many of our students are actually uh, achievers at, at their age. And then here is something that we can be very proud of. Uh, alumni, we were able to produce our first graduate from the Bilaan community, in the indigenous community last June 23. So she is uh, from actually from uh, South Coronadal. And then for our uh, al famous alumni, those who haven't uh, heard of our alumni, uh, Shamaine Bentanino of, uh, of course, Pro Am Provinciano, and then our uh, director, best director at the Cannes Film Festival, Raymond Red. And uh, Solomon Cruz, who, was, uh, who received a standing ovation at the recently, inclu uh, recently concluded uh, Venice Film Festival. And then we also have, I have not included here, uh, Nick Pichai, who is the script writer of Lapu Lapu, uh, the musical held at the Metropolitan Theater. Here is Grace Nono, one of our leading uh, ethno pop artists, and she's also an ethnomusicologist. Um, then we have Leila Florentino, one of the lead, uh, one of the original Miss Saigons on Broadway. Our beauty queen, Nina Ritchie Alagao. We have a uh, famous uh, young fashion designer, Santi Obsena, from the uh, House of Santi. 
And then yours truly, the first uh, alumnus uh, to be uh, appointed as the director of the school. And then a few of our cultural leaders at the Cultural Center of the Philippines and artists. And then finally, mainit na balita po ito, the vice mayor of Davao City um, actually is a visual artist and uh, he is a graduate of HSA Batch 1988. So maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Um, we will start the questions for the senators, but in my hearings, I promote um, I promote your your right to not fall asleep and uh, to move around. So anytime anyone wants to stand up and just shake their legs, go to the bathroom, no need to ask permission unless, of course, uh, you're the one on board. Um, Yes, and, and if you need anything, please let us know kasi mag-uumpisa pa lang yung questions natin. Okay, so um, we follow this rule where we start with the officers and then those physically present. So our chairman, uh, Senator Angara, you have the floor. And then after that, our uh, Senate President Pro Temp, uh, Senator Lagarda, is she here? Did she step no, no questions for me, ma'am. Just None we're supportive you. of the budget and uh, if we can okay. find any room, we'll want to help them with their needs. Yeah. Thank you. His presence here is a good sign. Uh, DepEd family. <laughs> Tsaka he was listening intently. Dami niyang tinatanong sa akin kanina. Um, Senator Lagarda, if, uh, obviously if she comes back, no, she'll have the floor. But until she does, Senator Pimentel, nag-step out yata ng sabay-sabay ang mga kasama natin. But he's coming back, no? I'm sure he, he had questions, no? Yeah, he just stepped out. Um, Madam Chair, um, online. This is Grace. Oh, hello, hello, Senator Grace. Yes, uh, I'll call on you when it's your turn. Um, I'll, I'll mention so that everybody knows and can um, can uh, manage their personal time, no? So, so after Senator Legarda, Senator Pimentel, Senator Gachalian, he's here. Uh, then Senator Ontiveros, um, and then Senator Tolentino, Padilla, De La Rosa, and then those virtually present: Senator Po, Senator Estrada, and Senator Binay. So, I'll give the floor now to the Chairman of the Committee on Basic Ed. Uh, Senator Gachalian, you have the floor. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Madam Chair, I'll start first with the uh, smaller uh, attached agencies. I'll start off with um, ECCD. Because I saw a uh, huge uh, cut from their 2022 budget, and um, intact naman po yung uh, ibang budget except for the NCDCs. Hello, good afternoon again, uh, Your Honor. So, as if I understand it correctly. Um, there's no more budget for the National Child Development. Yes, centers. Your Honor. Hmm. And um, what is the implication of uh, that? Actually, uh, as part of our mandate, of flagship, uh, the, the implementation of the flagship program for the each LG and cities municipality, we want to continue this uh, uh, flagship program to introduce or to model what we are planning to do with uh, the early childhood uh, education. Actually, ito po kasi yung ating uh, model center. Dito natin ini-introduce yung lahat ng uh, makabagong paraan sa pagtuturo. Hindi yung traditional na pagtuturo sa, sa dating daycare center. Ito po dito ini-introduce yung bagong curriculum na nindevelop po ng Early Childhood Care and Development Council, which is the National Early Learning Curriculum. Originally, um, the, the reason why we don't have any budget anymore is because of the uh, originally, our budget came from from uh, from uh, Republic Act 1010 or contrib uh, contribution of PAGCOR. So na deplete na po yung budget, and uh, we're asking for, to, to, sa GAA uh, na makontinue namin. Kasi uh, in totality, almost half of the total, uh, almost half of the total uh, cities municipalities yung palang po yung reach ng ECCD. Yeah, but I understand that uh, kaya wala na pong budget from PAGCOR because under the law it's only five years? Yes, five years contribution. Correct. 500 million per year. Correct, correct. And since that expired, wala na pong 
binibigay ang pagkor. Wala na po. So the, ilan po ang ND and NCDC? Mm. In totality, we're planning to... Okay, but right now, ilan uh, po? Right now, 859. Ilan po? 859. 859. Yes, Who po. operates ang itong NCDCs? The local government unit po. So local government yes, units po. po. Mm. Uh, so itong pondo, you download to the local government unit? Yes, we download it. And then you turn the daycare centers into... To child development centers. Child devel yes. development centers. Wow. Ilan po ang daycare sa buong Pilipinas? Uh, 51, uh, almost 51,000 plus. 51,000 yes. ang uh, daycares. And out of the 51,859 pa lang? Ang total na... na uh, no, uh, actually, out of 1,634... Uh, cities, municipalities, only 859 pa lang po yung na-reach namin na LGUs to provide the model center. But out of the 800, uh, uh, sorry, out of the 51 million uh, daycare center, only 1,850 was converted to child development center. 1,850. Uh -huh. Okay. So malayo pa. Malayo pa ho. <laughs> Is there any way... Uh, to change the the strategy uh, instead of the national government converting the daycare to NCDCs, it's the local government? Yes, actually, uh, Your Honor, uh, we are not the one converting it. It's the LGU converting it. Okay. But the process, we have uh, the process how to convert it. Okay. When we conduct uh, a professionalization for the the uh, existing daycare center or child development workers, sorry, the child development call workers, and when they start using the new curriculum, that's the time they will convert their existing daycare center to child development center. So yung process po na paggamit yung new curriculum, nasa kanila na po yun. We are introducing the new curriculum, and they are adapting it. Once they adapt it, Doon na po tatakbo na sasabihin natin child development center na sila. Yung funding po for the modeling and refurbishment, o sabihin na natin kasi nandun po sa batas conversion of existing daycare center to child development center. Ang ginagawa namin po, meron tayong soft component and hard component. Yung funding po na sinasabi namin na uh, hindi pa nakoconvert o hindi pa na model is only for the financial assistance, for physical uh, establishment ng building. Para bang sinasabi natin, ito pong sampung to, na-convert na. Pag na-convert to, kailangan naman natin i-model at magkaroon ng sabihin, ito na, naging child development center na siya. So, binibigyan nyo namin ng additional financial assistance. Is there any mandate for the local governments to convert to national child development centers? Meron bang timetable? For example, to be honest, sa Valenzuela, parang wala yata kami doon eh. Actually, uh, we already communicated. Uh, we have 50-plus uh, uh, daycare centers in Valenzuela, but I don't remember meron kaming ND, NCDC. NCDC. In Manila, in National Capital Region. Pero uh, ang, ang punto wala. ko lang, ho, wala rin naman nagsasabi sa amin ay convert na to child NC, development. Mm. Correct, to child development centers. Mm. So we're still operating under the old daycare Center. system. Uh, Although we improved it a bit, we have our own improvements, but my point of the matter there is there is no mandate. We don't feel the push from ECCD to transform ourselves from the old daycare to the new CDCs. So, and since wala na hong pondo ngayon, uh, baka lalong walang push na mangyayari. That's my, that's my point. So, I, maybe I, I, my, my point of the matter is I think we should re-strategize no? and uh, engage the local government units to transform their daycares to CDCs. Yes. No? Especially I, in the urban areas kasi mga urban areas may capability naman sila. The, the intervention that we're doing, Your Honor, is uh, we have, through the advocacy and social mobilization program that we have, we conducted a series of... Uh, yeah, but I don't feel it. Eh. Ako, taga Valenzuela po yes, ako. Wala, wala akong na... I don't see any... Uh, to be honest about it, I don't see any uh, engagement between Valenzuela and ECCD. No, so I don't hear of anything. Yes. Mm. No, so my, my point there is, sir, is... Um, 
Kasi yung, even though we res, even though the chairman and the and Madam Chair will restore the budget, I don't think we'll convert. We'll have uh, enough budget to convert 51,000 daycares. Mm. Actually, sir, uh, yung, yung the, the 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 conversion that I'm mentioning is uh, the program of ECCD is uh, provide one model center, which is the NCDC, and convert the 10 daycare center into child development center. That's the first program that we are uh, advocating to all LGU. Yeah. The rest of the, the 51,000 uh, daycare center, they will convert it at their own. Okay. So meaning to say, see, si, si, But what's the timetable? Is there a timetable? We, we don't have yet the uh, timetable, but uh, for the modeling of this, uh, for the modeling, for the establishment of daycare center or child develop, national child development center, we're proposing to, to, to reach all the LGU by uh, an additional five years if we are giving a budget. Uh, additional five years if we were going five to... Five years. Yes, if we're how going much to, do you need? Uh, how much do you need for that 51,000? Actually, uh, sir, um, uh, your honor, uh, last uh, Congress, we already asked the Congress to assist us in order us to have additional uh, extension of the parkour contribution amounting to five billion five billion in order as to to finish all the cities municipalities including the conversion plus in uh, we will provide all the provinces uh, one model center also for their for for their uh, provincial uh, innovation but unfortunately, yung batas po na, na, na bill na inain po sa Kongreso is napunta na po after third reading, hindi na po natapos. Well, let, sir, uh, ganito na lang, no? uh, so that we won't belabor the topic. Just submit to us, how much do you need to convert that 51,000 okay. daycare? And then, and then another one is, uh, I really want to encourage ECCD to change the, uh, strategy. the strategy because Realistically, hindi natin mako-convert yung 51,000. Okay. No? I think we really need to uh, seek the help of the LGUs and yes, encourage them and to a certain extent put some timetable to um, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, convert their CDCs. I'm talking from my experience in Valenzuela. So, ganun na lang po. Just submit to us that budget and then uh, later on, maybe through one of our hearings in the committee, we'll uh, listen to your uh, strategy. No? Okay. I'm just, I'm just telling you to, to uh, come up with a, a much more feasible strategy. Because talagang kulang in pondo. Mm -hmm. Can I ask one question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, with the permission of Senator Gutzel, just one question on the Please topic. Go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, uh, good afternoon. Ho. We, your budget originally for 2022 was 59 million, but uh, this through the help, the intervention, the leadership of. Uh, Vice Chair Caetano, who chairs this, this subcommittee, we increased your budget by 182 million. So you, your budget became 242 million. And that 182 million was for the establishment of national child development centers. Yes, uh, how, how are you, how are you uh, with that budget are you, in terms of utilization? Makana na utilize nyo, and what's your accomplishment report for that? For the utilization during 2021, we reached 91% of the total. Uh, 2022, po, hindi po to 2021. Uh, 2020, yes, 20, sorry, sorry. we gave you an additional 182 million for the establishment of NCDCs or National Child Development Centers. Kamusta na po yun? Ilan kung may nagawa kayo? Ilan po yun? Uh, uh, and uh, how are you progressing with the other, uh, with the usage, the utilization of those funds? Yes, uh, for 2021, our our total number of uh, rich LGUs is only 11 out of. Yung tanong ko po 2022. Ah, uh, 2022. Oh, sorry, 2022. Oh, oh. 2022. Sorry, for the 2022 oh, utilization, only 11 was reached by the by NCDC out of the 50 targeted uh, LGUs. Ang reason po nito is uh, actually prepared na po lahat, ano. We're just waiting for the exemption of uh, meron kasing issuance, uh, memorandum circular number three. So yung po yung nagiging hindering factor namin, bakit hindi ho kami makapag enter into a memorandum of agreement with other LGUs. So hindi ho namin ma-reach ma yung iba pa, yun lang ho talaga ang naging problema namin. Uh, have you discussed that problem maybe with DBM? Yung, kasi it will lead to a uh, underutilization of funds. Eh, pagka yes. Mm. Na, 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 
na-discuss nyo na yun with DBM? Actually, na, yes sir, na-discuss na namin. That's the reason why they, 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 they uh, encourage us doon sa notice of cash allocation na ipambayad muna namin for all the accounts payable. Mm -hmm. But the problem, hindi na namin, maubos man namin yung NCA, we cannot use the, uh, the remaining allotment because of that uh, issue once. I cannot enter into any MOA or contract with the other uh, recipient because yeah. of that. I, I imagine that's not exclusive to your agency, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, so maybe we can uh, talk to DBM about that problem. Mm -hmm. But thank you again. Thank you to Senator Gachalan for thank, thank you, lending this time. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator with, the with your indulgence of Senator Gachalan. On the same topic, para we can ano, leave this na rin. Thank you. Salamat, Madam Chair, and marami salamat kay uh, Sen Gachalan. Just on this exact same topic also, uh, Sir Isip, kasi nga we received the report that uh, ECCD Council received a budget cut of 91, 190, 190 million pesos. And may impression po na yung ECCD Council is actually underperforming based on your low level of budget utilization. At ganun din po yung kasasabi nyo sa amin ngayon, no? Out of 50 target LGUs, 11 pa lang at least uh, for this year. Um, maybe later I could also ask uh, the good secretary about this, pero dahil on board na kayo, uh, Sir Isip, I wanted to know anong assessment nyo sa ECCD program and what can we expect in terms of improving the performance of the ECCD councils para ma-fulfill po ang mandate ninyo. Okay. For the last two years, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, for the last two years since we have uh, a difficulty on... Uh, uh, reaching the LGUs and even uh, conducting our mandate or our program PPAs, uh, we provide additional or sabi natin, uh, alternative mode of delivery. Doon sa alternative mode of delivery na ginawa po namin for our PPAs, that uh, hindi na ho namin kailangan yung, yung, hindi naman, hindi kailangan, but hindi namin may utilize yung aming pinograma sa aming budget. Because of most of our uh, PPAs required a face-to-face -face, uh, activity doon po during the two years uh, uh, implementation of the program. Ang ginawa po namin is puro online po, which is hindi naman kami gumasos ng traveling expenses and e transportation expenses and even the hotel accommoda accommodation. So yun po yung reason bakit naging mababa yung utilization namin pagdating sa, sa program implementation. And for the establishment of NCDC, I have the record here that it shows that uh, for our obligation or utilization for the establishment of National Child Development Center, nagre-range po siya ng, ng uh, 90 to 95 percent. So only this year po ang hindi namin ma-reach dahil nga po doon sa ating problema. Salamat, Madam Chair and uh, Sen Gachalian. Siguro later na, I'll follow up with SEC from the higher level of DEPED itself kung paano nila uh, mas maitutulak uh, ang ECCD to fulfill your mandate. Salamat po. Thank you, thank you. Just to um, wrap up this topic, for the record, kasi uh, I'd like everyone to, to we're, we're, we're all obviously very interested on this, no? Uh, for 2021, um, correct me if I'm wrong, my record shows that 86% was your obligation rate and 75% was your disbursement rate. Okay, the following year, bigay naman kami. And as the chairman has said, we've really supported this. In fact, I want for the record, ang GAA is 182 million, but Mr. Chairman, the Senate version was 232 million. So we, 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 your subcommittee, Mr. Chairman, made a time frame where the goal was really every year just as just I had just as I had presented to in the DBCC briefing, we were able to close that gap, no, for the establishment of these centers because uh, the father of uh, the late father of our chairman is, was actually the um, the author, no, of the uh, of this law, diba? the law creating this. So so I've worked with him on this. Anyway, for the record, that's why we've always supported. Kaya we want to be sure na may proof kayo na you'll be able to deliver. And yeah, lahat kami we're on board on on. Uh, trying to help you here. So uh, I go back to um, the chairman of the committee. You have the floor, Senator Gachalian. And all of our questions will not be taken out of your time. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don't worry about that. Madam Chair, actually, on that topic also, the utilization, and uh, tamo po ba? in 2020, the utilization is only 27%. And then in um, 2021, is only 36 pand uh, percent. 
Your Honor, based on my records, uh, the total utilization rate of uh, ECCD for 2020 is uh, 91%, uh, sorry, sorry, 82%, and for 2021 as 86% for the total, no? But for the establishment of the center or the National Child Development Center, for 2020, 91%, and uh, for 2021, 95%. Po. I have a different figure here. The utilization for 2020 is 27%. Utilization meaning appropriations over okay. uh, disbursements over appropriations. Yes, I, I think that's the, uh, the reason for that is because of the total congressional insertion appropriated to ECC but not released due to uh, issuance of, uh, uh, because of the Bayanian Act. Hindi ho na-release namin lahat yun eh. Okay. So okay. We, our record is based on the allotment that we received. Okay, okay. So may mga FLRs in other words. Mm. No, during 2020 and 2021. Apa. All right, sige. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, and then uh, another question to NAS, no? to National Academy thank of you. Sports. I also saw um, a significant cut on the item, uh, E.D. Joy. On the uh, second, it's uh, this is this um, secondary education program. A decline of a hundred million. Tama po ba? It's the uh, integrated uh, uh, promotion, development, and implementation of quality and enhanced sport integrated secondary education program. Medyo mahaba siya. Uh, from 188 to 88 million. Okay, let me check on that po. Maraming oh. fans ng NAS dito, si uh, Chairman Sani, <laughs> si Chairperson uh, Pia. Uh, maraming author itong bill na ito dito, including myself. So. Yeah, Are you referring um, to the operations, yung 188 million down to, one, down to, to 88? 88? Yeah. Uh, it's a program titled Promotion, Development, and Implementation of Quality and Enhanced Sports Integrated yeah. Secondary so Education Program. Yeah. Um, Honorable Senator, I, I, uh, the reason why we had um, uh, yung decrease yung aming uh, utilization rate because we, we budgeted the 2022 budget was really based on a face-to-face -face, uh, learning modality. So, whereas the actual classes and training were done online, so this results really a lower expenditure for, you know, meals and even, uh, uh, which I uh, um, I mentioned a while ago, uh, we were not able also to procure anything yet, no? So, that's the reason why we have a very low utilization rate because... And that's why they cut it also. Yes. Because the utilization rate is... Uh, low. So yes, but, but, but I just want to ask the implication of that cut, no, because the it's secondary education program. So I would assume this is academic related. Uh, actually, most of this are all operations. That okay. this in this that's uh, only uh, in the academics, but most especially on the sports training um, uh, parameter. So what's the implication to uh, the operations of NAS? Uh, of course, one, uh, there's no exposures uh, for, for our students. So that's why we were not able to utilize our budget, no? Uh, restriction, you know, travel restrictions and even the promotional activities were not done. Kaya yun po yung reason kung bakit um, hindi na utilize din po talaga yung budget, Honorable Senator. But, but will the operations of NAS be hampered with that cut? Yes, definitely po. Paan, paano po? That's what I want to uh, understand. No? Kasi bumaba siya ng 88 to 88 yeah. million. Eh. So yeah. ano po ang, uh, ma, ano po ang maapektuhan sa NAS? Uh, okay. One is that uh, nung 2021, I just want to start. No? 2021 po kasi, Senator, uh, we are under the line budget of DepEd. So our uh, resources are still with them. So uh, wala pa pong... No, but, uh, but, but with this cut, ano maapektuhan? Alin po? Yung, y yung cut na 100 million? Uh, affected dyan yung aming ano, yung uh, uh, one is operations and then number two 
uh, our uh, sports uh, competitions, uh, the um, uh, uh, scholarships, yung ano, uh, yung uh, meals, um, pati yung ano, pati yung uh, uh, okay, nutritional uh, supplements, lahat po yung uh, uh, meal preps. So e even the uh, the the standard um, expenses that are needed for yeah. for the students. So, because right now we are still uh, um, all of our uh, operations are still online, but we are doing blended learning. Yeah. So no? uh, for Joy, this year, I just want to spread that into the record so yeah. that we'll have um, understanding on what is going to be the implication of that cut. No and. Uh, uh, I know that uh, NAS is um, trying to uh, grow itself you know, and attract more students, but of course the cut will not will not enable it to attract students, especially from the countryside. So right. just want to put that on record and just submit to us uh, what will be the effect of that uh, 100 million cut. Yes, Senator, we'll, uh, we'll prepare those um, uh, listings and then we'll submit to your office. Uh, Thank you, E.D. Joy. And, yeah. But there's also another um, item that I saw here. No, um, there's a there's 81 authorized positions for NAS, but uh, by end of the year there's 77 unfilled positions. No? So hindi siya na, w w How come it's not filled? Ah, uh, okay. Still we were uh, actually we were affected. Thank you for that uh, manifestation, um, Senator. Well, we were affected by the. Um, the hiring period from the from the time that during the election ban and then the transition period so wala pong na hire during the time so we only started hiring by july so doon pa lang po nagsu start yung aming hiring uh, positions and we were also limited because uh yung sa plantilla positions kasi kailangan uh, uh ma fill up yon okay unfortunately um Iilan lang din yung mga capable of uh, forming the the um, the personal uh, selection board, so nagkakaroon po ng ano lang ng limitations on the hiring process. But hopefully we'll be able to fulfill and uh, filling up the hiring the you know the, the remaining 70 uh, positions by the end of this uh, year. Aya po by end of the year in the 77. Hopefully, uh, Senator. Um, Sayang kasi, it's already there. Yes, so that's again. correct. Right. We will we will really try to uh, fill in all the remaining um, positions. Po. Uh, thank, sige. thank you, thank you, Edi, Edi, um, Joy. And lastly, uh, Madam Chair, just a statement to uh, Dep Ed Proper. Um, I'm quite uh, happy that um, the Dep Ed budget increased by 63%. Uh, that's about 10% uh, of the to of the previous uh, budget, and I'm um, also happy to note that um, the utilization rate of DepEd remains high, you know, at 90%. Alam ni Yusek Anto initially, utilization is really a big problem of DepEd initially, no, during the early times because spending half a billion pesos in one year is not uh, easy. No? Now spending 700 billion pesos is not easy. So uh, just want to commend the department for maintaining that high utilization. Hopefully we can still go up no, to 95 to even higher. And um, the added 63 billion is also uh, a welcome addition because we're striving to hit that 4% uh, target, 4% uh, of GDP as prescribed. No, so 46%, but uh, lower end at 4%. So at least that's uh, a little bit uh, closer from 3% to 3.2% now. Uh, so that's a good um, piece of good news for our education sector, especially uh, we're trying to recover from the pandemic. Just um, a little bit of um, suggestion. Um, I saw that the SPED budget, um, we need to... Um, Hopefully, with the under the leadership of our chairman and and, and chairperson, we can uh, improve uh, additional I, additional budget for SPED. Um, I, I think that is uh, an item that we can improve on. We can also improve on the allocation for ALS. Uh, I know it's under FLO, but traditionally we, we're encouraging the department to create a separate item for that so that 
else will have its own um, uh, line item to spend. No? And then um, lastly, um, I remember last time Secretary Briones mentioned some bottlenecks in the hiring. I think it takes about six months to hire people. And um, I'm quite confident under the leadership of our Vice President with those bottlenecks can be now uh, resolved. No? Because um, I remember uh, Secretary Briones uh, mentioned that uh, there are some coordination issues with CSC and others. No? So I think those are the things that we can improve on. And lastly, pala, the um, issue of classrooms. And this is something that we can work together to improve on. I know that uh, I agree with, 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 with VP Sara that uh, the classroom issue is a uh, quicksand. Eh? No, because we run some figures every year, uh, government loses about 7 billion pesos in calamity uh, in, in terms of um, classrooms because of calamity. So in other words, hinahabol natin in 7 billion. But uh, this year, the allocation for classroom is only 5 billion. So negative na tayo kaagad. No, so I think that's something that we can work on, although uh, it's, it's a, um, quite a challenging amount, but it's something that we can work on. No, so with that, um, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, thank you for the time. And um, uh, thank you very much. And um, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Kachalian. Um, let's go back to Senator Legarda. Our, ah. Would you like to say something, ma'am? Uh, go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we'd like to give an update about the special ed uh, program from uh, USEC Sevilla. Thank you, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair. And Senator Wheel, we would like to update you that we will internally realign some of our funds so that the SPED uh, program will be funded in 2023. So we will restore the budget of SPED uh, as the per instruction of our VP Secretary, um, all of it uh, in the same level of the 2022 budget. Po. Thank you, Your Honor. That note, to be clear, ha. Tatlong taon namin pinaglaban ni Senator Gatchalian na naka-separate yan ha kasi we wanted to assure uh, the the SPED um, parents and the recipients of course that that budget is really for them. no So um, maybe you say, Anne, you can add a little bit of details kasi di ba, because of the new law, uh, Senator Gatchalian, no? our, in, our, our inclusive education law, there, there were some, obviously there are some changes that had to be made, right? Um, so I, you were telling me in my briefing that, uh, of course, there was this transition and everything. So unfortunately, um, hindi nga na fund yan, but you, you are assuring us that it will be there. I really want to put that on record because pag wala yan dyan sa, sa NEP, next year wala na naman yan. So that, that's, my, that's my problem also. Eh. So what otherwise we could devote as you know, the limited congressional initiatives we can make, we'll have to make space again for that. That's why I really want to put on record now, you wanted that budget, it's supposed to be there, and as far as you're concerned, uh, for the next budgets to come, you will fight for that budget. In fact, more, pa, because we now have a law that puts very strong uh, demands no, on, in terms of uh, what we have to do to support that law, diba? So the record shows uh, Yusek Ann is nodding her head. <laughs> okay na naman yun, unless you want to add pa something. Yes, uh, Yusek Singh wants to add yeah. something. Ma'am, based on our discussions, we would like to institutionalize the budget for SPED. Uh, in fact, the, when we say institutionalize, we'd like to put it as part of tier one when we do the budgeting. Uh, part of it really right now is to coordinate uh, with the Department of Interior and local government so that we can, we can communicate with the local chief executives and identify uh, the number of special uh, children who are in the special education. And hopefully we can put infrastructure programs or projects in certain areas where there is volume of special education children. So our target is to institutionalize the SPED budget for DepEd. That's uh, part of the directives. Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yeah. Still want to say something? Uh, no, just the updates on the other matters. But yes, uh, about the SPED. 
kayo na, kayo na muna. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Yusek Densing and uh, Yusek Sevilla. And uh, Yusek Mercado already committed uh, during our execom committees that reforms will be implemented in the BHROD during her term. Would you like to say something? No more? No more? Yes. And then uh, an update on the classrooms uh, construction. I was already called for a meeting on Monday in the afternoon with um, the Department of Budget and Management Secretary and the Department of uh, Public Works and Highways uh, Secretary on Monday regarding classroom construction. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, we welcome Madam the- Madam Chair, I'm sorry. One, yes. one more, one more um, to, to close the issue on SPED unless there's anything else later on. I, I also just want to put on record that um, uh, in the last two years, uh, Your Honor, we we included a special provisions uh, that access uh, infrastructure for access of uh, SPED um, uh, students uh, would be made available in the construction and uh, and even in the quick response fund. So for the record, so I know that we're all on board on this, and uh, you can expect that we'll put that again for the special uh, as a special provision. We we all worked on this together, the senators. So we're happy to continue to do that. Okay, the floor is yours. Um, uh, Madam uh, Senate uh, President Pro Temp. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, uh, Vice President, Madam Secretary. First of all, we welcome the clarification regarding SPED because it caused quite a stir uh, questions, but I was confident that it would be restored because I've never seen a zero budget for SPED, especially since I also chaired this committee for five years, and I don't think there's been a zero budget ever for SPED, but I was sure that there must have been some miscommunication and you would not allow under your leadership and as well here that there would be so anyway it's been solved and in fact um there could be further improvements even on enhanced budget and we welcome the so-called institutionalization of the sped budget i will go now to what uh, madam secretary vice president mentioned on the school building program because since i started in the senate in 1998 the word backlog of basic education facilities and classrooms and school buildings has always been uh, one of the challenges of the department. And I see it's already 2023 budget. It's still a challenge. So my question is, will there ever become, will there, ever, will there be a time where we will no longer have a backlog? Because um, based on your allocation, the 5.947 billion you've allocated for the school building program and the 3.199 billion for 2022. I don't think this will cover all the pending, uh, not just rehabilitation, but new classrooms needed. So my question is, what is the real backlog of classrooms, school buildings, um, and how long will it take us to overcome that backlog so that we are uh, on um, the exact number of needs? Of course, we have a growing population and we realize that. And w if you were to have your wish list of a budget for the basic education facilities, more particularly the school buildings, how much would that be? So your 4.97 is for how many classrooms? It says here, 2,379, ang layo niyan sa backlog na 165,000 na backlog. And another question is, I have two figures. Uh, DepEd says the backlog is 97,000, but per DBM in the DBCC, I see that it was 165,522. So, simple po, ano ba talaga ho ang backlog? At ilang taon pa natin or magkanong pondo para hindi na tayo makabarklog or hindi pa talaga mangyayari. And otherwise, we tanggap na lang natin that we won't be able to meet all of this because for the past 25 years, there's always a backlog and we're never able to catch up with this. Thank you, Madam Secretary or any of your staff in charge. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Lagarda. ASEC uh, Christopher Arnupo will answer your question. Thank you, thank you, Madam Senator. Um, their indulgence, the 169,000 was based on the 2019 National uh, School Building uh, Inventory. 
However, recently uh, there was an instruction to conduct an, a survey uh, from the various um, regions, and the numbers that we got there was about 97,408 as of July 2022. Uh, but we're still validating it further, as you are aware, uh, calamities happen and definitely uh, additional buildings will have to be built. For instance, I'll give you an example, which is in the case of Masantol, six classroom buildings were burned uh, during the Typhoon Cardine. Uh, well, it rained, but it got burned. So these numbers uh, relatively is liquid as, as we're trying to validate it on the ground. As to the funds, uh, we would definitely need as much as um, the proposed budget for, uh, for school buildings about the, to restore the 87 billion uh, that was taken from uh, DepEd's budget. Uh, it was reduced further to 5.9 billion. If we, could, if we could access that, then definitely we would be able to provide the backlog. As to the number of years, uh, based on our computations, about three years to complete on a continuing uh, construction basis. So up to 2025, you envision that uh, given your projections for the annual budget, you will be able to complete and there will be zero backlog in three years? Is, is that possible? It seems, I, I actually heard that statement also decades ago, but we still have a huge backlog. Oh, oh. But yeah. are you optimistic we'll finish it in three years? Parang impossible. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, the backlog, ma'am, is uh, due to uh, the, the lack of appropriate budget to actually cover it. Uh, so it gets protracted because we could not meet the, the numbers. However, if the budget is restored and with an aggressive uh, point to really make our partnership work with DPWH or even with our regional offices to conduct the necessary procurement, we might be able to hit the three-year uh, projection period. The 2022 uh, status of its obligation, disbursement, and your actual implementation of the present year's budget of 3.199 billion. Are my figures correct? It's 3.1 billion for this year. It's already September. What is your status of utilization? It's with DPWH, ma'am. We will have to ask DPWH to give us those numbers. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. You I'm should sure know you would that. Have the you should know that. Meron kayo niyan. Meron kayo niyan. Alam kong pondo niyo, at alam ko rin na may MOA ang DPWH at saka kayo na sila nag implement pero meron kayong figures niyan. Correct, ma'am. So, as to the obligated, it's about 13.45%. This is based on the report that was given to us. 1.3 or 3.0? 1.3.45%. As to the disbursement, it's about 18.03%. But as I've said earlier, um, while, while we have these figures, we will have to work closely with DPWH on, on the completion of the... Uh, okay, which brings me to my question. It's not a matter of Congress giving you the budget because you have a 3.199 budget and it's already the last quarter of the year. Uh, yes, DepEd is the one that constructs and only rehabilitation and refurbishing is done by DepEd itself. But you only have a 13% correct uh, disbursement uh, and 18% obligation. What is it? Or is oh, it the other way around? The other way, the other way, the other way around. around. Okay, whichever it is, it's way below the 20%. So even if Congress gives you your wish list to complete the backlog in the basic education facilities, school buildings, but your rate of obligation is so low, may I know, uh, Madam Secretary, it's also good that you know this as a new Secretary of the oh. This is a perennial, it's an annual problem, regardless of administration. What is the problem between DepEd and DPWH that the monies given by Congress is not timely allocated, utilized, implemented to the detriment of the utilization of the funds for our children? Ano po ang problema palagi? Ma'am, I can only surmise that uh, for 2022, uh, given that we had an election, so election ban is a, is a factor. Second is the number of calendar days or the timeline that the, um, the pre-construction uh, timeline proposed, which is about 239 days. This is from uh, DPWH based on, on our number. So what we're saying is that if, if we are allowed to procure, we would be able to reduce it because we would be able to 
uh, streamline uh, the process of procurement. However, uh, this is how it, it's, it's timeline. Uh, I, I'm not certain. You know, we have, this is not the first year problem. Every year, for in fact, decades, that's always a problem. The utilization of the building fund, the school building fund. USEC knows this. Ano kaya? I, I'm certain in the time of um, Madam Secretary, would we be able to find the solution to a quicker uh, utilization of the fund? Sayang, nandiyan ang pera. And we're only using less than 20% by the end of the year already. Secretary. Yes, uh, thank you, Honorable Lagarda. Ma'am, um, this is something that is already in the list of uh, the items you want to take up in the meeting uh, on Monday. Actually, I was happy that I received the message uh, this afternoon uh, from DBM that uh, DPWH will sit down in that meeting as well. Thank you, Madam Secretary, and we hope that by the time we reach the plenary, uh, we will be able to address this. USEC Ann knows this. This is an annual problem, not just in your time, but in previous administrations. Otherwise, sayang po ang pondo na linalaan at gusto man naming itaas po ang inyong budget, pero kung hindi nagagamit, ay sayang na sayang po. Which you mentioned about disasters. Um, paano ba ang dapat gawin um, para hindi gamitin na ang ating mga skwelahan as evacuation centers. I think, where did I see it? There's 63% of schools which are used as evacuation centers according to a study. So I'd like to know about the learning conditions uh, during disasters so that there's learning continuity. Uh, being a, a disaster prone country with more than 20 typhoons, alam naman natin, hindi natin uh, mapapagbawal yan, but how will we be able to do learning uh, continuity even during times of disasters? What do we do? We cannot prevent them from not using the schools. Uh, sorry, yes. Yes. Um, Secretary. Before, before the Vice President answers, no, to be clear, we can prevent them uh, by law. By law, it, it, they're not supposed to, but I know the, the, sec the, sec the, the Vice President has made a statement on that. I just wanted to clarify that we should be able to prevent them. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, will we do that? <laughs> Otherwise, where do we put them? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Legarda. Uh, Your Honor, we released, I released a recent uh, department order where I instructed uh, our field offices not to allow our schools to become um, more or less permanent evacuation centers. So we only allow not more than 15 days. Uh, of uh, schools to be used as evacuation centers. I already raised this as well with um, the secretary of the ILG uh, so that he can speak to his um, LGU officials as well that this is the direction of the uh, Department of Education because before August 23, when we were conducting an inventory of our schools, we found out that some of our schools are still used as uh, evacuation centers for Odette and the landslide in Leyte. That is why we released that uh, department order and talked to the secretary of uh, the ILG. But um, our USEC for field operations, USEC Escobedo can add more about uh, the answer, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Madam VP and uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, we have a law. Uh, that provides for the construction of evacuation centers in every municipality, and that uh, schools should be the last resort in terms of uh, using uh, our schools as evacuation uh, sites. But in the event that uh, there is no evacuation center in a municipality, uh, and our schools are used as evacuation sites, then uh, our uh, uh, teachers will resort to alternative delivery mode of uh, learning delivery, which means that uh, we will resort to a modular learning or uh, online. And uh, we advise the local government that uh, the use of our schools as evacuation site will be just uh, two to three days because uh, we have to use also our schools for uh, our learners. And uh, this recent uh, uh, typhoon carding, uh, we have uh, 
schools that are that were used as evacuation uh, centers in Nueva uh, Vizcaya, but uh, the uh, evacuees uh, uh, just used the our schools just uh, one day or two days at most. The memo of the secretary was 15 days, not more than 15 days, right? Yes, yes. So thank you for that answer, and we hope that I'm not sure if it's a law. I think it's just a bill that every LGU is mandated to provide its own evacuation center. I don't think it's still a law. And if it's a law, it may be an unfunded law because it's not the case. We don't see mm -hmm. one. We don't see 1,600 evacuation centers in every city and municipality. But um, talking about disasters, the issue of mental health and uh, during typhoons during the pandemic and we know that um, the issue of uh, the hiring of plantilla guidance uh, counselors um, is also a challenge because you may have the funds for that but only is this accurate 42 percent of the items are filled for guidance counselors uh, we know that registered guidance counselors are difficult to higher may we know madam secretary we spoke about this a few months ago when you visited my province when we uh, although this was a college student but we talked about the importance of mental health and the uh, possibility of hiring or having guidance counselors and psychologists uh, in schools may we know if the dep ed has a program for post pandemic recovery for uh, guidance counseling and why is it that at least 42 percent of the plantilla provided for is still unfilled to date thank you yes uh, thank you uh, your honor the matter of uh, the program will be answered by Yusek Escobedo of the field operations and the matter on the HR will be answered by Yusek Mercado of BHROD Thank you. Um, actually, we've been advertising the positions for guidance counselor, but there are no takers because one is the position is very low. It's only grade 13, no? and the, the grade level is very low. And there are no the the market is not the labor market does not have as many guidance counselors. Uh, some guidance counselor would even prefer to teach rather than act as guidance counselor because of the the progression also there's no very clear progression yet of the guidance counselor while as the teachers have very clear career progression but uh, we're we're trying to level off with BBM to come up with a different system that we can scale down the requirement like psychology graduates can apply for the position and our NIAP, the National Educators Academy, would just uh, develop some program that would build their competency for guidance counseling. So we hope that uh, that would be approved in scaling down our uh, uh, qualification standards. Thank you, Madam Senator. Um, Madam Senate President Pro Temp, let, let me add, no? Uh, I, I think you didn't mention, um, but we've had it in our previous discussions over the years. The requirement is even more difficult because it's such a low salary grade. And then there's a masteral requirement, <laughs> masters. So uh, the chairman and I were talking about it. Um, it's kind of really embarrassing, no? it's, it's such a low one. Anyway, I've also had a discussion with our new um, DBM secretary on that, no? but she will need your input on creating that career path because it's really so much needed now. So please work with her. As you said, you've already started, but I've already told her that this is something that we've been trying to do. Um, kindly work with her para baka next budget, no? Ma, ma ano na natin to. Can you imagine if other teachers um, just, just need to get, um, the teachers can get a master's or imagine, we're, we're, so, we're so rigid about it. Like you said, no? Psychology, psychology graduate, biata pwede, talagang kailangan guidance counselor. It's crazy. And Madam Chair, aren't you supposed to pass a professional exam also to be a guidance counselor? Yes. So that's, a, that's another restrict, for, that's another hurdle. Uh -oh. that's There's another a requirement hurdle in, uh, for uh, yeah. passing the exam for uh, guidance uh, counselor. Tsaka mataas yung level nung, no? kukunti lang yung pumapasa nung guidance counselor Yeah, that's counselor right. So that you, you limited yourself already there in itself. Uh, 
So you know, we, we the aim is good, ma Madam Chair. No, you want to professionalize and uh, have qualifications, but unfortunately. Uh, we've taken it to fetishistic levels. Eh? Masado, may fetish na tayo with titles and degrees when really the the trend is really towards competencies rather than titles and qualifications. So I think uh, you're, you're the educators, you're the ones in charge. I think we have to really have that spirit there. Like in, in, in CHED, we, we, we want a master's degree for all the, uh, or a, a doctorate for all the uh, state college presidents and offic officers, you know. So, so what you end up is, is you have all these people trying to get PhDs from the easiest possible uh, school, diba? Para matapos nila kagad, rather than have a quality uh, degree, diba? So, unfortunately, that's that's the perverse effect of uh, some of our policies. So, sana we move towards competencies rather than titles, qualifications, degrees. Thank you, Senator. Senator Lawrence still has the floor. Ah, I still but have a few minutes. Have Thank a few you. Minutes, but um, Senator Hontiveros had a follow-up question before that's you fine. jump to the guidance counselor. It was still on disaster risk. Go ahead. If, okay. if you don't mind. That's fine. Thank salamat, you. Madam Chair, at uh, salamat, uh, Sen. Lauren. Uh, sec, about the contact time. So, may department order kayo na maximum 15 days lang pwedeng gamitin ng schools for uh, evacuation centers. But still, 15 days. 15 days less contact time out of yung 200 days. So, estimate mga 7% pa rin yun ng contact time among the students and teachers. So, at hindi pa po kasama yung ibang mga interference. So, pagkatapos po ng disaster, pag naibalik na sa school yung uh, soul na paggamit sa eskwelahan, paano yung catch-up plan for learning? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Ontiveros. Actually, ma'am, even even if uh, they do not attend in-person classes, there is an assumption that there is a distance learning, uh, particularly with modular assignments or uh, online if it is uh, possible. Salamat ka, Ayosek. And salamat, Madam Chair and uh, Sen. Lauren. Actually, what I just want to add, because I, I had the luxury of time no, when I had the briefing with your team, um, Vice President, it was very nice that the chart that they showed me wherein the mandate is um, everybody is face-to-face, uh, -face, but the exception would be this is now the best time to introduce blended and flexible learning when there are circumstances such as uh, um, disasters, um, um, isolated areas. That's the time we introduce blended learning. That's the, exact, that's the exact time to do that, and I appreciate that we made that distinction. Thank you. Maybe you can show that later on. It's, it's a very nice visual that, you know, para klaro tayo, hindi basta-basta lang na modular tayo kung pwede naman mag-face-to-face, -face, You use it when it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I go to the issue of reading literacy. We've all uh, read in the past months the OECD uh, report when we were one of the countries that was surveyed, and this is the PISA report, the Program for International Student Assessment, which said that one in four Filipino students now have difficulty uh, in reading. We've all read that in the past few months. Um, how will, what are the new programs of the DepEd? Uh, are there changes in the curriculum to be able to address this very uh, special need at this most critical time? on the challenges in reading literacy. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, our USEC for uh, curriculum and instruction, USEC Gaviola. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Senator Ligarda. Uh, first of all, uh, we conducted this uh, PISA in 2018, and uh, the result came out in 2019. And I think that was the, the basis of our uh, findings and uh, after that we came up with an intervention and uh, we hope that uh, it will uh, assist us to catch up with this uh, observation we have this piece uh, uh, we conducted another PISA uh, last uh, June 2022 and uh, we are waiting for the result come 2023 so the intervention that the DepEd did One of these uh, interventions is uh, to improve uh, the standard of our uh, teachings. Yes. 
Madam President, I may. Uh, Madam President, uh, during our many discussions about these learning laws, first of all, uh, while there is seemingly and obviously a learning loss, uh, there is no conclusive evidence that there is such. In other words, there was no real study made, but we conclusively had that. Even the world poverty, um, the, the loss poverty, uh, the learning poverty that the World Bank assessed our country is simply a simulation. But uh, obviously there is. So what we're doing right now at DepEd is we've spoken with the curriculum and instruction strand to carry on all assessment tools possible, whether from our side or from the private sector. Uh, in a crisis environment, we are allowed to do a hit and miss. Because if we do not try to hit and miss or try to dis use these assess assessment tools, we'll not be able to know whether or not there's really a real a loss. The private sector, several private sector uh, schools, including that of the University of San Carlos and Thames International Business Schools, has proposed to us certain assessment tools that they've been using for many private schools, and we intend to use that assessment tool for public schools. Just to confirm that there is such a loss, a learning loss a prevailing right now. Uh, there's already, we've already done the assessment of the K-10. to uh, There's now an internal and external consultation with stakeholders before we launch the new curriculum for, uh, for K-10. to By November, we'll start to assess K-12, to and hopefully in six months' time, we'll be able to uh, redo the curriculum of K-12. to And more importantly, as mentioned by uh, Chairperson Senator Angara, we will focus more on competencies rather than titles. In other words, uh, many of us in the, in the executive committee of the DepEd will focus at looking at initially at the K-3 uh, curriculum, looking at it in a more practical perspective rather than theoretical. And we've already accepted a certain principle, uh, at least in the part of the DepEd today, under the, under the, the uh, leadership of, of uh, Vice President Secretary Sara, that we will challenge the perspective of the, the experts. In other words, the words of the experts may not necessarily be gospel truth. So we will have to balance the perspective of the experts and the perspective of the, or the practical side of education. And we will have to listen to our stakeholders, including the teachers, including the parents, and even the students themselves. So this will be a whole of nation approach to be able to address this so-called uh, 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 learning loss. And the 2019 PISA result is, also, is, is already, some, to, to some extent, a conclusive way of telling us that there is already learning loss, having, uh, having uh, landed last among 79 countries in, in compre and reading comprehension and second to the last in math and science. So we are in a crisis situation in the education sector that was very, made clear to us by Secretary Sara, by BP Sara, mentioning even to us that we are lost in the forest right now because uh, we are too theoretical in addressing learning loss rather than being practical and looking at the competence side of it. So that's all, Madam Chair. Uh, can I clarify? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Vice President. Yes, Your Honors. Um, we um, instructed uh, for our field offices to uh, create their own learning recovery and continuity plan, and uh, we have strategies to accelerate these uh, um, learning recovery uh, continuity plans, uh, one of which is uh, profiling and clustering of learners based on academic needs or learning gaps. Number two is expand learning time. Number three, strengthen the implementation of the policy on engaged time on tasks. Number four, conduct end of school year or summer learning remediation intervention programs. Number five, develop learning remediation and intervention resources. Number six, implement in-person and virtual study groups or body system. Number seven, engage parents, legal guardians in facilitating learning. Number eight, intensifying implementation of reading intervention programs. Number nine, int intensify the use of the English language in teaching learning process for subjects taught in English. Number 10, conduct regular home visitation and follow-ups. Number 11, establish Literacy at home and in the communities. Number 12, conduct professional development activities for teachers, including the learning action cell sessions. Number 13, hire additional learning support aids. And number 14, intensify instructional uh, supervision. Um, for the past 
two weeks, uh, we were doing focus group discussions among the different strands in uh, the Department of Education. And then one thing we learned is that there is no national reading program for our uh, learners. So it is up to the field to develop their own uh, reading program through their Brigada Escuela. And this is something that I think um, should be worked on by the Department of Education, a national reading program for our K to grade three. Be happy to support that. And I appreciate you giving us your 14 pointers. That was what I meant. I wanted to know the interventions that will be done by the DepEd and the Vice President Secretary. So, um, well, succinctly uh, told us what will be done. I would be happy to receive perhaps the operationalization of those 14 pointers as an intervention to the 2018 OECD uh, PISA uh, study where we landed last with Dominican Republic. Yes, thank you very much for that answer. I will not ask you now to give me the details of those 14 points, but I would be so happy to see how each field office would be helped uh, in terms of the pointers that you had said and how we can help in terms of Yes, establishing a national reading program that would be so exciting to as one of the programs of the Office of the Secretary. And can, are, will you be allowed to do that also in the field offices of the Office of the Vice President or even in a depth ed regional offices? That would be good. I don't think we've embarked on such a national reading program in the recent years, have we? Not in depth ed? Honor. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor, no, there is no national uh, reading program. Will this be in English? Um, the direction of uh, President Marcos is that uh, we go back to uh, the bilingual program, which is uh, subjects that are supposed to be taught in Tagalog, uh, should be taught in Tagalog, and uh, in English subjects that are supposed to be taught in English should be in English. Lingual English and Filipino. Yes, it correct. would be helpful if the committee uh, through our chair and vice chair members of the could receive perhaps a uh, clearer uh, concept note on the national reading program which uh, we would like to support uh, i have more questions but i don't want to take too much time of all my colleagues i can see the chair staring at me already but uh, i have so many more questions but thank you second round continue lang tayo dito yes uh, but thank you i did i use my 10 minutes you already did. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. No, uh, kilala man ako music and talagang, uh, we, we just support DepEd and we want uh, everything to, to be supported. But, bilin lang ha, yung 18% or no 13% utilization ng school building na naman. October na tayo. <laughs> I'm sure that the secretary would not allow any waste of funds with regards to the infrastructure that needs to be built. Thank you very much. For Thank your patience, you. Madam Chair. Thank mm. you. Thank of course, you. anytime. Um, I, before I go to the next um, senator who will ask, which is Senator Riza, I, I just want to wrap up uh, the issue, at least, and so far it has, it has been discussed, no, on the uh, school buildings, no, to, to also give the Vice President uh, Secretary a uh, background. In the three years that I chaired the committee um, budget, the budget of uh, DepEd, uh, Yusek Annie will remember I, I hosted in my own office uh, meetings between DepEd and DPWH. So, ASEC Arnuko, in all due respect, you need to know these things, <laughs> okay? You should have come here knowing those things and not say, tell us, now you will ask. Because you took over from whoever was handling this, and we've had these discussions, right? I, I trust, in fact, uh, VP um, Secretary, the following year, maayos na. At least maayos yung discussion no? on, on the implementation. I leave that to the in agencies. Pero maayos na yung discussion, natapos na yung turuan. Which is why, dear colleagues, one of the very important budget requests they have is that, and I don't know the right term, that evaluation, the pre-site site valuation. Importante yun kasi yun yung toka ninyo, di ba? Or I don't know now with devolution kung toka nyo yun in so far lang as the fifth and sixth. Make, make it clear na lang. But that was such an important thing because after you evaluate it, Yun lang naman ang nireklamo ni DPWH noon na hindi nila magawa kasi hindi pa, hindi pa clear kung ano dyan, tapos mamalulubog pa pala yung lupang yan, maayos na kayo doon. So I'm just saying, you've done all that, 
ideally you're ready for funding, but now you have to ensure that DPWH is on board because it's a new, it's a new team. When, when Secretary Mark was there, naayos natin yan, which actually took about a year, ha? Pero naayos natin yon. So now you have a new DPWH secretary, and I leave it to your good office to work with them. Um, very quickly, I want to flash on the screen the, the same, um, uh, a similar table that I showed in the DBCC briefing. This 91,000 is a figure that came from uh, the basic education hearing chaired by Senator Gachalian. So it's, it's not too far from the other 90,000, but anyway, that came from the hearing. So using the current budget that you have, the 5.92 billion, you'll only have 2,368 classrooms. If you intend to, to fulfill this gap, to, to close this gap in six years, then it's 15,000 classrooms that you'll be building per year, and that's 37 billion. Anyway, you can read the whole thing, okay? So I leave that, I leave that with, with everybody because at least clear tayo. And I had this discussion, I showed this slide to, to Secretary Mina, and I'm very happy, Mr. Mr. Chairman, that she told me that they're now having a, a meeting on this to, to, to at least be clear kung ano yung kaya nilang gawin. Diba? Para nina, we don't waste time na trying to decide na saan tayo. Diba? At least it's clear. Na in the next six years, sabi, sabi nga niya, she can only commit to six years, of course. But at least we know after six years, we left the gap smaller, something like that. I'll just show quickly another slide just based on another number. Um, but it's the same, it's the same formulation. Um, just based on the number of, was it 127, 127,000, which is a number present that, that I had uh, in the 2021 budget hearing. So it's, it's similar, but it's just based on a different number. Are we showing that? Okay, never mind. Anyway, I also have, the, I'm just, I just wanted you to show the numbers. Based on 2021, it was 127,000. I'm glad lumiit. So by praying, lumiit ng 30,000, Mr. Chairman, ang gap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, it's now the turn of uh, Senator Risa Hontiveros. You have the floor, ma'am. Salamat, Madam Chair. Um, sec, ang mga tanong ko po para sa inyo. Uh, but first, Madam Chair, if I may, just a brief uh, greeting or opening statement. So, Madam Chair, to the DepEd family, led by our Education Secretary, Vice President Sara Duterte, and colleagues, uh, magandang gabi po. At the outset, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my support for the DepEd in its vision for Filipino learners to be holistically developed in basic education and to acquire 21st century skills that will enable them for civic participation and engagement anchored on distinctly Filipino values of being makatao, makabansa, makakalikasan, at makajos. I also share the belief uh, of DepEd that the Philippine government must commit to investing more in the education sector at par with the international benchmark and in line with the constitutional mandate. However, as much as we want to give in to the request of the DepEd for more budget, reportedly asking for an additional 100 billion pesos, our overall high macroeconomic uncertainty and competing public interest spending constrain our fiscal space. So given this reality, it's self-evident that we have to do more with less. And to do more with less would mean not letting scarce funds go to waste, parked and hidden somewhere, or just return to the national treasury. So yung unang tanong ko po on the education fiscal space. So the uh, uh, CPBRD of the House noted that DepEd's budget utilization rate is 96.7%. If this utilization rate remains constant in 2023, a 3.3% will still become an unused appropriation amounting to around 23 billion pesos, which would still be high. So may I inquire how the DepEd intends to continuously improve its budget utilization to close the gap in the education sector? Uh, right, thank you. Uh, Yusek Sevilla of the Finance Trend. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Honorable Senator Ontiveros. Um, actually, ma'am, talagang mahirap ma-reach ang 100% budget utilization. It's really impossible. For example, in procurement, nobody will bid exactly the same price ng approved budget for the contract. So that is something na palagi rin po namin in-explain na it's really very difficult to reach. In fact, ma'am, 97% is really the perfect for uh, the financial performance. 
Yung 3% po, talagang napakalaki yan for the Department of Education. But what we are doing is, pag maaga po ang procurement, pwede mag-reorder. At yun po yung ginagawa natin na sana maaga na mapoprocure ang mga dapat na iprocure. And I think yung pong sa school building program, I would like to add and confirm na talaga pong maraming improvement na nangyayari noon. Kasi minsan, binibigay yung budget, hindi pa po ready for implementation. And so what we're doing is, what we propose or what we request should be ready for implementation. And actually po, ma'am, kung magpo-propose tayo, talagang yung pinakita ni Senator Pia, it would be the ideal. But we, we are not requesting for that because it's not possible to be implemented in one year time. So, yun din po yung uh, ginagawa namin sa lahat ng mga program teams and the uh, executive committee members na kung ano yung kaya natin, that's we call the absorptive capacity. And we assess kung ano po yung kulang pa sa amin. I think planning is also very important. Kaya po sa finance, laging ka-partner yung planning. Uh, isa pa po sa gusto namin mangyari is yung early procurement activity. So, kahit wala pa po yung GAA 2023 using the NEP 2023, our uh, other secretaries are uh, instructed by, by our BP secretary to prepare for 2023. At yun po sana yung mga early procurement activities or isa pa po ito, policies. Sometimes, sandyan na po yung budget, kagaya na nangyari sa SPED, kailangan po yung policy nakahanda na para po pag na-approve yung budget, ready for implementation. So these are the things po na amin pong ginagawa. Um, Isa pa rin po na maganda is at the end of the year, when you have a saving at nagkakaroon po ng mga batas na nagbibigay ng uh, allowances or benefits, eh, pinagkahandaan din po namin yun. But this is only chargeable to uh, personal services or uh, PS. Uh, isa pa po, ma'am, ang tingin namin, ang bulk ng aming savings ay yung sa feeling up position. Kasi po yung availability rin ng mga... Uh, yun nga, yung mga takers, for example, we have budget for guidance counselors, pero wala naman pong nakakapasa or hindi nakakualify or sometimes it takes time. So ito po yung mga savings na at the end of the year nakikita namin. But uh, we are really trying our best, ma'am, by moving, to, moving forward together as a team with uh, proper planning and uh, financial, regular financial monitoring po. Thank you po, Your Honor. Maraming salamat din, uh, Yusek Sevilla. It's always good to hear how yung iba't iba pang maraming tasks ng department uh, ginagamit nyo para ma-maximize yung utilization even further and in that way create even more fiscal space for the department. Chair, were you going to? Uh, okay. Yes. I would like to say something. Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Honors. Uh, in addition to that, um, the finance trend for this year, uh, we already inventoried the... the Yes, yes. Uh, the budget that will lapse uh, by December 31, and the, uh, you have the number. Yes, and uh, we already wrote the strands who have pending uh, items, and much of it is with the procurement because of uh, the election ban and uh, the delay in the reconstitution of our bids and awards uh, committee because of uh, we were waiting for the appointments of our USEX and ASEX. Salamat ka, Ayosek. Um, to my next subject, uh, Madam Chair, on affirmative action on IP education. So it, it's come also to my attention that the IP education program's budget was reduced from 144.3 million pesos uh, this year 2022 to 53.4 million pesos in the NEP 2023. So it, Kung tama po ito, may I inquire as to the reason for this significant decrease by two-thirds? And um, given the reduced funding, what's to be done to strengthen rin, strengthen our IP education program despite this loss uh, of 90.9 million pesos? Yes, thank you. Yusek Sevilla of the Finance Round will answer. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Um, actually, ma'am, talagang ang... 2020 and 2021 had a big effect in our program implementation because of the no face-to-face -face, uh, blended, yung naging blended approach po tayo. At ng lahat po ng programa namin, we try to reprioritize and reallocate. But for IPED, uh, marami po sa mga programa nila requires the convening of learners. And so that's the reason why yung utilization po nila ay mababa in the two previous years. At yun po yung nangyari sa NEP nila. But 
iPad will be among the restorations that we will request our budget sponsors to, to do. So, kasama po rito yung SPED, iPad, and all the other curriculum and instruction programs na mababa po yung utilization in the past two years. And we will internally realign using our flexible learning options po sa pondo. Salamat, uh, USEC. Kaugnay pa rin ito, uh, whether it will be USEC still to answer or the second care to uh, uh, comment, central to that IP education program of ours is the recruitment and the hiring of IP teachers o yung ating mga guro mula mismo sa mga katutubong komunidad. So, may I ask the Secretary or the USEC if there is an ongoing program that encourages scholarships for teachers' education from IP communities. And can this uh, also in particular be given attention in the utilization of funds uh, sa ilalim ng Education Human Resource Development Program? Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Yusek Mercado of uh, BHROD will answer. Yes, um, we have a, we already have a department order for hiring of, uh, of IP teachers. And um, we also have looted a fund from our National Educators Academy program, which is competency for building competency for teachers, specific to IP concerns. So that's taken care of. Thank you, Senator Pate uh, Riza. Salamat din po, uh, Yusek Mercado. That's, uh, that's good to hear po. Uh, and uh, on a final note on this one, I recall uh, during the sauna that the Secretary wore a Bagobo Tagabawa dress to raise public awareness on the plight of indigenous communities caught in armed conflicts. And knowing the Secretary's advocacy for peace and order, uh, I would like to ask if DepEd, uh, by way of affirmative action, might voluntarily realign uh, its confidential fund to fully restore the budget cut on the IP education program. Or uh, as a prior question, Sec, Para saan po ba yung confidential fund? Yes, um, for our confidential funds, uh, this is based on... Check lang mama. Uh -uh. The uh, Joint Circular 2015-01 of the COA, DBM, uh, DILG, Governance Commission, and the uh, Department of uh, National Defense. And... Um, the use for this uh, confidential funds is um, expenses pertaining or related to surveillance activities in civilian government agencies that are intended to support the mandate or operations of uh, the agency, uh, particularly those uh, listed in uh, 4.7, uh, 4.8 of the um, joint circular. And, um, that is the purchase of information necessary for the formulation and implementation of programs, activities, and projects relevant to the national security and uh, peace and order, rental of transport vehicles related to confidential activities, rentals and incidental expenses related to the maintenance of safe houses, purchase or rental of supplies, materials, and equipment for confidential operations that cannot be done through regular procedure without compromising the information gathering activity concerned, payment of rewards uh, to, in, to informers, non-employee of uh, concerned government agency subject to the following conditions of um, A, B, and C, and um, uncover, prevent illegal activities that pose a clear and present danger to agency personnel, property, or other facilities and resources under the agency protection done in coordination with appropriate law enforcement agencies. Other than that, uh, which may be authorized by uh, the GAA. Some of the um, issues and challenges that we have encountered uh, in our field operations are um, the uh, drug involve involvement of our personnel and our learners. Uh, we already have a case where our um, teacher is selling uh, drugs to our learners and uh, uh, the all forms of abuses we have uh, physical abuse we have sexual abuse and uh, other forms and then uh, there is also the 
recruitment in violent extremism and uh, terrorism. Uh, we also have uh, schools uh, which are targeted for recruitment of um, learners in uh, insurgency. We also have um, um, cases and we are working right now on <coughs> the involvement of our personnel and our learners in child pornography. We are currently working with this, uh, with uh, the Department of uh, Justice. And um, other um, illegal activities that uh, our learners are recruited uh, inside uh, our schools, as well as um, these um, scams that are happening uh, online and uh, in our, inside our schools, uh, both of which victimize uh, learners and teachers. Uh, these are just examples of uh, cases that we have encountered in uh, field operations. Well, Dagan Salamat Sek, um, I will return to my earlier question about uh, realigning to restore the fully the budget cut on the IP education program, but I do just feel the need, Madam Chair, to make of record na yung uh, uh, subject uh, activities in the joint uh, circular, parang mas bagay po, honestly, mas bagay pang confidential and intelligence funds for our existing uh, national security, national defense, law enforcement, even women and children protection uh, uh, bodies, governmental bodies and, and programs. So just, just for the record on that, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so, um, but I'll, I'll return also to my question, Sek, kung uh, bilang affirmative action, kung voluntarily po iridi align uh, ng department yung confidential fund para makumpleto ma ulit yung natanggal na budget cut sa IP education program? Uh, with regard to uh, budget cuts, um, we can, uh, within uh, the Department of Education, we can work out um, the alignments in our budget uh, so that we can fund uh, activities, uh, and programs, activities, and projects uh, that need uh, funding. With regard to the uh, confidential funds, uh, this is a proposal that we submitted to Congress. And uh, as I said earlier, with regard to the confidential funds of the Office of the Vice President, we submit to the wisdom of uh, Congress with regard to the amount and the proprietary uh, matter on a decision on the uh, confidential funds but uh, we would like to put it on record that uh, we reassure the congress and uh, the public that these funds will be used in relation to what is allowed in the joint uh, circular of um, those uh, agencies mentioned earlier 2015-01 uh, thank you Salamat po, um, Sec. And I appreciate, Madam Chair, yung reiteration ni Secretary nung na-appreciate din ni Minority Leader kanina yung unang sinabi nila sa House noon na the Department will submit to the wisdom of Congress dun sa halaga kung mayroon man at yung, propri uh, yung pr pr propriety, propriety ng uh, pagkakaroon ng confidential and intelligence funds ng Department uh, for for such activities enumerated in the joint circular. So, if I still have time, Madam Chair, in this round? Okay, salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Balikan ko lang po yung sa ECCD, if the Secretary would care to add dun sa sinagot ni Sir Isip uh, earlier. Um, from the higher and the broader perspective of the department bilang uh, ang ECCD program or ang ECCD council eh, attached agency, uh, ano yung assessment ni Secretary about the ECCD program and what we can expect from the department uh, to improve the performance of the ECCD councils para ma-fulfill nila yung mandate nila? Right, yes. Um, we already, after his um, uh, question and answer earlier, uh, we talked to um, Director Isip and uh, we asked him uh, what is the problem with their uh, procurement and uh, he made us understand that the problem is that they don't have an executive director 
in their council right now because uh, their previous ED was coterminous with the appointing authority from the previous administration. And there is a pending um, paper application from the same executive director that is lodged with the office of the vice president. And uh, we committed to him that uh, we will, Yusek Den Singh committed to him that he will uh, look into where the paper is right now, considering that there is also a change in the um, executive secretary position. Salamat, uh, salamat kaayo, uh, uh, Sec. And uh, as chair of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, Relations and Gender Equality, um, bukas ako makipagtrabaho sa DepEd to strengthen our ECCD governance. As I believe, like all my colleagues, that it's really an investment in the future and critical, uh, pati dun sa lifelong learning strategy na china champion ng department. Do I still have time, Madam Chair? Uh, one last uh, topic on the local school boards na napag-uusapan na rin at saka yung special education fund utilization. So recognizing the experience of the secretary in local governance and on her side, the former undersecretary of DILG serving as her chief of staff, anong mga reforms, anong mga innovations ang pwede namin ma-expect mula sa department to ensure functional and effective local school boards? Parang top of mind na yung local school boards talaga ng halos lahat. And efficient utilization of the special education fund. Kapansin-pansin din po kahit nung uh, briefing ng DBCC sa amin, sinabi ni uh, Sec. Jok, no that there, are in, there is in fact a surplus from the SEF. So, syempre, lahat kami interesado na ma-utilize ito uh, para ma-achieve ang mas maraming objectives ng iba't ibang departamento natin. And lalo na ng DepEd. Uh, yes, uh, Yusek Sevilla of the Finance Chan will answer the question, mm -hmm. Your Honor. Salamat ka ayo. And Yusek, just to remind all of us, ang sinabi po ni Sek Jokno na SEF surplus is 36.8 billion pesos. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Secretary, BP Secretary. Uh, Ma'am, your special education fund has uh, a supervision, oversight supervision jointly by DepEd, DBM, and DILG. And we have been reviewing and enhancing the joint circular on the utilization of the special education fund. For the last two years, we made it COVID responsive. And we have allowed the use of the fund for COVID response and the support to the basic education learning continuity plan. I think, ma'am, yung uh, programa ngayon ng ating current administration, the learning recovery and continuity plan should also be uh, reviewed and included in the new uh, joint circular on the use of special education fund. Marami po rito, kagaya ng mga reading programs na sinasabi, shared responsibility ito. Hindi po kaya ng national government lang or ng DepEd lamang. Ang maganda po sa nakita namin during the COVID situation, marami sa mga local government, uh, local chief executives natin ay ginamit ang local school board at nakipag closely coordinate with our uh, superintendents. Ang party po ng Department of Education and the local school board is the, uh, the uh, active participation at yung pong pagbibigay uh, kaalaman sa mga local chief executive, ng mga superintendents natin. At uh, dito po sa field operation, under our regional uh, directors, lahat po sila ngayon actually nandito, umaaten, ay kasama po sa binibigay namin na capacity building on the use of the special education fund. Uh, we also want to clarify na wala po kaming power or, or uh, 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 participation or control in the use of the SEF, but all of our superintendents are the vice chair of the local school board. And uh, we are also attending uh, a lot of the uh, hearings of the Committee on Basic Education on the uh, proposal to uh, amend the uh, composition of the local school board. At uh, ito po ay chaired by uh, Senator Wynne Gachalian. At marami po dun sa mga proposal niya ay talagang supported din po kami sa Department of Education. Kasi kasama rin na po sa local school board, kasama po dapat ang parents, community workers, or, or civil society organization, at lahat po ng uh, stakeholders ng ating uh, uh, education, especially for basic education. Thank you po, Your Honor. Maraming salamat din, uh, Yusek Sevilla. 
talagang yung mga existing instruments na meron, ang DepEd, uh, lalo na kasi nandun na nga sa phase ng learning recovery, uh, talagang nagkakaroon ng rethinking paano siya ma-maximize for more participation of all the stakeholders to achieve our learning objectives moving forward. Kanina nga nabanggit din, I, I, I think I heard one of the 14 interventions na inenumerate ni SEC. Uh, something that I've also heard from some other stakeholders, na pati nga yung Brigada Eskwela, bukod sa paglilinis, paghahanda ng ating mga paaralan, baka pwede rin siyang mamobilize for, uh, I think I heard something about uh, remedial classes, but may mga nag-iisip na yung catch-up classes in summer and elsewhere in breaks in the, the school year, ay pwedeng mamobilize din yung mga lumalahok uh, dun sa mga Brigada Eskwela at the beginning of uh, every school year. So, uh, I do hope that DepEd, together with the DOF, will find a way to reduce the surplus in the SEF. But more importantly also, may I ask how DepEd can help LGUs and schools with limited SEF bases to generate and mobilize resources to aid in local education service delivery. Uh, Yusek Sevilla will answer the question for the finance trend. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma'am, um, do po sa formula ng MOE, uh, ang regular na kinukonsider sa Department of Budget and Management is the number of enrollees, number of teachers, and number of classrooms. But now, in the formula of the Department of Education, we have put an equity formula. That means the more SEF the, uh, the school gets, the less MOE share that they will get from the National Fund. So ito po yung portion na inilagay namin and I, I'm sure NCR hindi na po talaga namin binibigyan kasi uh, by experience na nakita nga po namin pag binigyan namin ng school MOE, for example, Taguig, Pasi, Quezon City, Manila, Caloocan, Makati, hindi po nila nagagamit yung MOE na galing sa DepEd dahil sobra-sobra po talaga yung SEF nila. So that equity formula will now help schools that are coming from cities and municipalities na maliit po yung SEF. But I think we have to improve kasi uh, we are working with DOF uh, and this is a good opportunity dahil yung sometimes yung report po ng, school, ng superintendents namin ay hindi nagmamatch sa report na nakukuha namin sa DOF. Yung pong SEF na nare-report sa amin sa DepEd sometimes is lower and we are now trying, uh, finding ways para po nga maging transparent din yung pag-report ng SEF. Dahil yun po ang gagamitin namin na uh, formula kung saan uh, mas konti ang SEF, sana mabigyan po namin through the national government. Thank you. Salamat. Uh, ang ganda po nung uh, ganung update ninyo, uh, USEC Sevilla and SEC, uh, about that equity formula. It reminds me of yung mga long-time advocacies din uh, ng iba sa amin, halimbawa na doon sa pagkuwenta ng um, ano ba yun, yung era okay, but this was an earlier incarnation na, no? we have a, a develop, a, an evolution on that, pero may mga long time advocacies na bukod sa tatlong orig na criteria para kwentahin yung era, dapat yung isang additional criteria ay yung poverty incidence uh, same thing for labor movement na kaya may advocacy sila na tigili na yung regional wage setting kasi when will less uh, develop regions or when will um, four to six class municipalities ever catch up kung kahit dun sa mga uh, mga, uh, mga financial mechanisms na ganun parang walang itong equity formula na ipinapasok nyo ngayon sa SEF. So I, I really thank you for that uh, uh, update. So always one of those innovations na nakakabigay ng, nakakapagbigay ng dagdag pag-asa when we hear it being um, pioneered in, in departments. Uh, as a last question, if I still, thank you, Madam Chair. Last question na lang for tonight. So to help us in the committee to uh, appreciate how DepEd intends to em empower principals, empower principals in school-level education governance financially, meron po bang mechanism para, o may mechanism na ba in place para i-monitor yung school level generation and mobilization of funds and how are these funds how these funds are utilized to contribute to the education sector's target outcome and goal at ito po naririnig ko rin yung ganitong concern at kaya ko inaitatanong uh, in relation dun sa isang uh, assessment na masyadong uh, centralized pa daw hanggang sa ngayon yung ating education system 
Yes, thank you. Yusek Sevilla of the Finance Channel will answer. Thank you po, ma'am. Uh, we, we have a policy na meron pong MOE transparency sa ating lahat ng eskwelahan. So, ito po yung magandang impormasyon na malaman ng ating mga magulang, mag-aaral. Hanapin niyo po yung board sa lahat ng eskwelahan dahil meron po doon nakalagay school budget or MOE transparency board. Doon po nakalagay kung magkano natatanggap nila from DepEd, from the local government to the SEF, or other incomes na meron po sila or revenue generation na meron sila. And through the PTA, the Parent Teacher Association, ito rin po yung paraan kung saan matatanong din nila kung ano ba yung mga kulang na resources. And honestly, we will admit, hindi po talaga kasya ang resources uh, na available ngayon, kahit pagsabahin pa po yung national and local. Most of them are also asking the alumni, the parents to contribute. But it would really be helpful kung alam nyo po kung nasaan itong board na to, yung MOE, Transparency Board, or the School Budget Board, para po lahat tayo na, na pupunta sa eskwelahan, alam natin kung uh, ano ang nagagawa ng ating mga principal. Marami po sa mga principal natin actually are very creative, resourceful, and uh, isa nga po sa kanilang competency will be public relation, PR. Kasama na rin po yun sa pagkaano nila ng income generation ng, para magkaroon po ng additional revenue for the uh, school. Marami salamat, Yusek Sevilla. At dagang salamat, Sek. Uh, in the interest of time, Madam Chair, at natang, nauna na yung staff ko magsabi sa akin bago ang chair times up. Uh, I'll reserve some uh, of my questions for the plenary del deliberation on the budget of the DepEd. I thank the Chair and the Secretary, Vice President Sara Duterte, and the whole DepEd family uh, for graciously answering my queries. And rest assured that I'm one with you in pursuit of an accessible, equitable, uh, and quality basic education and addressing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on learning. Salamat ka ayos. Marami salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Risa. Uh, Senator Francis, it's your turn. In the interest of time, it's You're the almost, last and hopefully the least. Uh, it's almost Your 7 Honor. p.m. I am donating uh, five minutes of my time to Senator De La Rosa, if he's here. Wala. So he, he told me he'll monitor. I'm having lang the secretariat call call all of those who are reserved, who are virtually, who were virtually present. So if, it, if he's not here within five minutes, uh, my other five minutes will be donated to the uh, chairman, chairperson of wow. this committee. So I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Your you. Honor. Been asking questions for the last two days. <laughs> um, Madam Chair, may also donate my time for the second round to the chair because I have full support for everything that they've said and more. Uh, they have much work to do, so I can easily ask them anyway, but I'm so excited with the national reading program and I would be happy to, we would be happy to help uh, the vice president with that program. So no more questions as yeah. well. While, while we're just waiting for the response, my questions are really just for the agencies. Eh? Uh, I mean, the, the attached agencies, very small questions, so my staff can even just approach them to get clarity because obviously the objective naman is for us to try to fund more, no? So kaya lang tayo humihingi ng further clarity on that. So we're just waiting na lang for the responses. Anyway, I, I think I'll rephrase. Uh, may, I ask, um, may I ask E.D. Joy Reyes of NAS to come to the table? See, I think it was... Was it uh, Senator Gachalian who posed the question? Is she, is she here? Oh, anyway, let's wait if she'll come. Uh, um, Grace. Sa NBDB, and I'm just letting you know what my question is so my staff can talk to you. I just want to know uh, the, uh, parang percentages of the kind of books. Like, kasi you always talk about children's books, no? Yan yung ano nyo. Pero some of the books that you either support by grants or whatever are not children's book, including the sample that you gave me. So ano ba yung mga percentage nun? La, la, my staff will just go up to you, no? Uh, anyone? Ano? Meron, are we waiting for... I assume na wala na sila, di ba? Oh, okay. Your Honor. Ah, yes. Yes, opo. 
Um, I just want to put it on record, uh, my answer to uh, Senator Legarda regarding her question in the backlog of uh, classrooms. Yes. Um, I don't think we will be ever be able to solve uh, the backlog on classrooms. I already answered this during the meeting, during the hearing in the House of Representatives. Uh, it was a problem in 1998, and it is a problem still in 2023. So. Um, if you can see in the slide earlier, we presented during the audiovisual presentation, number, um, number six therein, the critical reforms supporting the achievements of targets. We put their integration, integrate ICT in teaching and learning. Uh, I believe as um, uh, the DepEd Secretary that we really need to uh, maximize our learnings in the blended program and uh, uh, online uh, classes and distance learning and flexible learning options. Uh, I think, I believe that this will address the problem on the quality of, the immediate solutions on the quality of um, the uh, teaching of our instructors and um, the shortage on uh, classrooms. Initially, we have been talking to uh, the Embassy of India since uh, they have education challenges as well in their country and uh, because of the size of their population, they have uh, shortages as well in resources and uh, they have through the years developed um, IT solutions on these um, challenges. Uh, that is um, one of the tracks that we are looking at right now to address uh, quality issues and um, resource issues. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Grace Po is um, online. Senator Grace, are you there? Yes, yeah, Senator Pia, hold on just one second. I was okay. just having dinner because uh, I didn't think I was already. Uh, are, are you going to ask the Secretary VP any questions? Just because. Uh, no, no, no. Um, actually, I. Uh, you see my video now. No, yan. Okay. No pressure. Right. I didn't want to pressure you. I, I'm just asking lang kasi I was going to let the the uh, office of the secretary, in particular the secretary, go ahead because my remaining questions are just for the, the agencies. But go ahead. No, this is very easy. Um, <laughs> first of all, I would like to thank the secretary for increasing the budget for the national feeding program. Um, Palagi natin sinasabi na ang punot dulo siguro ng mababang mga uh, marka ng ating mga estudyante ay dahil marami sa kanila pumapasok ng gutom. So siguro isang appeal na lang na talagang i-retain itong budget para sa feeding program tapos uh, pag-aralan mabuti kung paano natin ito mapapalaganap. Kasi ngayon, ang mga nasasama lamang dito ay yung mga wasted o kaya yung mga yung mga talagang balatbuto na baka naman yung mga undernourished eventually can also be included in the program um, another thing also teka na bubulunan na ako dito sa kinain ko <coughs> relax muna relax <coughs> madam secretary pasensya na but madam chairman one na lang po, uh, <coughs> doon sa feeding program natin, uh, I just want to emphasize that it's really important that children go to school nourished. It doesn't have to be expensive, kahit na mga gulay lamang doon sa mga natatanim sa paaralan. The important thing is uh, we also evaluate if schools have the proper kitchen or if they have a commissary that other schools uh, can share uh, together. And um, I guess also I saw in the news that Polilo Island schools are de were devastated by the storm. Um, I don't know how many schools there are, but supposedly they're, about, they're asking for about 100 million pesos. I just want to know, um, maybe in writing, how many schools and why they came up with this number. So that's all, and I, I wish um, the department well, because this is also um, 
crucial to the development of the country, that the children are fed well, educated well, and are cared for well. Good night, and have a hopefully you can end your hearing soon. I was here since 2 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for waiting with us. Yes, uh, we requested the uh, data by uh, Senator Grace Po uh, is noted by the Secretariat, and then we will submit the requested data. Thank you. Um, Madam Secretary, we know it's, it's the, the hour is late now, so my remaining questions are really for the agencies, and I don't, I don't even need to get an exact answer. You've all been, you've all been here for long hours. Um, so please, ma'am, um, you, you were, I, I'm about to uh, approve your budget naman, not to submit it officially, <laughs> so don't worry about that. I just wanted to post, <coughs> excuse me, the rest of my questions, because one of them regard, is, re, with, is with regards, I don't know, baka, Yusek Ann, you can be the one to answer this. I received a question on the, a new uh, requirement for um, offering of senior high that they must, they must have a 10-year lease. 10 year lease for for on the property uh, to be able to offer senior high and apparently it's a, a burden for many because they've already been especially with COVID uh, they've been um, having difficulties and with this new 10 year lease in fact not only is it um, a financial burden but apparently <coughs> wala ka masyadong mahanap na landlord na magbibigay ng 10 years so I don't know if you have an immediate answer if you want to get back to me Yes, yes. Ah, meron ka? Yes, this, this is um, Department Order uh, 41, Your Honor. In the, this is an, a mandatory provision to a previous uh, Department Order. Uh, in the previous administrations, the schools are required to actually own the site. And, um, and um, if they do not own the site, they are required to present a, an, uh, a plan on how to acquire their uh, site. Mm. So, yes, it's on their plans to uh, how to acquire a site. And uh, the reason for the policy that um, the site should be owned by the school is that there should be permanency. I think that it, that was the reason. So uh, schools came to us saying that um, they can actually operate without owning the site. In fact, uh, they can also explore build, operate, transfers, or uh, long-term uh, leases. That is why from being, uh, from the policy that each school should own a site, we gave them options. Um, one is that um, they can um, present a duly executed deed of sale or they can present a duly executed deed of donation or they can uh, present a duly executed deed of use of rock for a guaranteed period of not less than 15 years and a duly executed lease with an initial guaranteed period of not less than 15 years. The 15 years is, um, was computed, uh, Your Honor, based on the K-12 program. So assuming that the school opened offering uh, kinder to grade one, um, there is an assumption that they will continue on right. until uh, grade 12. Mm -hmm. And then we added uh, three more years just to um, give them uh, leeway on uh, continuing on operating as a school. That is why uh, there is a 15 years requirement for uh, the lease. This is to ensure that uh, there is a commitment by the school to continue on with their services and operations. Okay, I, I, I understand that, Your Honor, um, especially if, uh, with respect to the basic education part, no? 
Pero yun lang pong uh, yung sa senior high, maybe you can study it because a few years ago when we started the senior high program, remember we, we had a shortage. In fact, di ko pa na clarify sa inyo kung wala na tayong shortage. So maraming college na nagpa senior high. And I think it, it is these colleges or parang mga technical schools no, that offer maybe two-year programs, computer programs, who will no longer continue offering senior high if that will be required from them. The, the, I think some of them are, are renting in mga, alam yung parang office buildings, no? So, I leave that to you, that's your policy. Pero tingnan nyo, baka maapektuhan yung may kakayanan mag-offer ng senior high. Because specifically, I was told, wala silang makuhang mga uh, lease. Walang magpapalease sa kanila ng ganon. But I understand on the basic ed, pero baka sa senior high lang to applicable. So maybe you can just take a look at it, no? Um, as I said, uh, Senator Estrada has a manifestation. Uh, let me call on him, Senator Estrada. We are about to end, um, but I'm told you're back online. Sabi nyo, Senator Estrada, hello. Uh, we'll wait 30 seconds for Senator Estrada, but um, I was just saying to make use of the time, Senator Gachalian, sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'll interrupt you. <laughs> you I think you were asking uh, E.D. Joy of NAS earlier, now what would be the effect diba, of that? Ano? And um, I, I wasn't able to, to ask the follow-up question timely, but wouldn't the effect be that it, it affects the incoming batch that comes in because you will what what all of you end up doing is you make do with limited resources and you spread it out so when you say that uh, this is for their food paano maghahati-hati sila so effectively nas will have to make a decision na baka wala silang batch anyway uh senator jingoy you are here we are here what is your pleasure so is the vice president there good evening yes your honor uh, hindi, gusto ko lang siya makita. Ayoko na magtanong. Ginuto mo si Vice President. Kanina pa siya nag-aantay sa'yo. Ay, hindi, Wala. gusto ko lang siya makita. Pero hindi naman ako magtatanong. So, pwede na kami magpaalam. Pwede na. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> so, as I said, no, I, we have questions. We will discuss it with, uh, with the team. Uh, I know, Your Honor, your team will be available to us no, for further questions. Para pagdating sa plenary, mas konti. So with no more questions uh, for today, the budget of DepEd, the Office of the Secretary, ECCDC, NAS, NBDB, NCCT, and PH, uh, PHSA, as well as the Development Academy, which I heard a few days ago. So isasama ko na dito, uh, which... I, I heard last September 27, are all deemed submitted to the plenary subject to our discussions and the submission of documents requested by the senators. This hearing is hereby suspended. Thank you. Good night. Congrats to all yeah. of you. <laughs>